Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Welcome to today's live stream. Uh, sorry, it took a little bit longer to start. We had uh, some connectivity issues that we wanted to solve because uh, we're testing something. I'll explain later today as well. Uh, but yeah, we just wanted to make sure it, uh, it worked as far as we could uh, establish. But welcome to today's stream. I'm Peter. I'm Ja. Of course. Uh, we're not really sitting this close together uh, because, yeah, it's... Uh, Exactly. No touchy here because uh, of, of course, the COVID stuff. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm using the wave hairstyle today. Well, thanks, I guess. Uh, I guess I just need to get uh, get a haircut again, but uh, <laughs> it's fine. Um, so, yeah, today what we're going to do is uh, we're going to, well, you can see I've got some components here already. It's the power supply, of course. Uh, I've got some graphics cards here. I've got some uh, nice... CPUs, uh, so I've got uh, pretty much all the components I need here to create a nice build. And the idea today is that we create a nice, uh, yeah, a, a nice build for you guys. Um, the original idea was that we were kind of joking a little bit, like, hey, let's let's build like the the ultimate PC that nobody can buy and, and nobody can get, you know, those components. That, that, Ooh, but yes. then we ran into a couple of issues because you know we we also couldn't get some of those components. Yeah, we are so, of use. Uh, we're kind of in the same boat, although we do have a luxury position that we do have some samples here. So we had to kind of make do with uh, whatever we had lying around, which is not bad at all. Let's, let's be honest. Um, so yeah, we've got basically a choice uh, uh, in, in two departments, I'd say. So uh, the CPU motherboard department and the graphics card department. Those are the major choices. Um, so Starting off with uh, CPU and motherboard, of course, there we have uh, on the side of, uh, well, let's just basically start off with what we ended with last stream, if you were here. Uh, it, this is an i9, uh, Core i9, 1100, uh, sorry, 11,900K. Yeah, it's a little bit of no a mouthful nowadays. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I saw somebody saying that they are uh, making their uh, product names now in, uh, you know, coding language, ones and zeros. Um, but yeah, and uh, with that, I have a motherboard, which is the Z590 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi. It's a really nice board. Uh, well, uh, don't worry, we'll we'll get to the close-ups later because that's that's exactly mm. what we're trying uh, what we're trying out today. We should have some glorious close-ups. Um, so that's one of the combinations that you guys can choose. And Ja will, uh, or I think the, the bot will spam uh, a link in the chat to the vote. So you guys can actually vote. And then uh, right above me, we will have a, uh, I'm not sure if it's already going, Ja. Feel free, choose the parts. There we go. Ooh, 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 it's already started, guys. Yeah. <clears throat> so indeed, um, you know, we will have a combination basically of the uh, most popular motherboard and CPU. And uh, I will, of course, combine that with the uh, most chosen graphics card. So that's on the Intel side, what I've got for you guys. And on the AMD side of things, uh, for the CPU, I have got, and this is a little bit of a big thing. It didn't really come in this, but uh, this is one of the things we use to transport some of these uh, CPUs. It's a nice little box. Exactly, exactly, yeah. But this is a uh, Ryzen 9. 5950X. Uh, and again, I will show you a really nice close-up uh, in a bit. Um, and we, we use this box because of, of course, AMD has the little pins on the rear of the CPU. So you need to be extra careful with it. If you bend some of them, then you might not be able to use it correctly. And I have an X570 ACE, an MEG ACE motherboard. Um, kind of, I have to tell you that I had to flash this board to make it compatible with uh, the latest series of CPUs, of course, uh, but that's uh, for, for people who have uh, or have gotten into either the 400 series or uh, 500 series of uh, motherboards for AMD. I think you've kind of gotten used to uh, BIOS flashes by now, right? It's, uh, it's a uh, widely known thing that, uh, yeah, things have to be updated. It kind of comes with the territory of a, uh, you know, a socket like AM4, which you want to keep using for as long as humanly possible uh, you know you kind of have to stretch it and so in the end uh, making it compatible with newer CPUs well you know then you'll have to do some uh, flashing yeah many many people in the chats awesome <laughs> to see <laughs> yeah <clears throat> 
Um, and I don't know if we can actually show, I saw somebody asking how many people have voted. I don't know if we can show that later on, John. I don't know if we have any numbers, but... Well, uh, yes, I have the numbers you have here, the percentages. but I can't yes. show it uh, uh, on the screen for now. No, that's fine, that's fine. So, of course, later when uh, yes. the votes are, uh, have all come in, uh, we'll say, you know, just how many people participated. Yes. And also speaking about participation, uh, yes. if you look at Peter's uh, left side, you also see that for today you can also win a very nice Watch Dogs Legion game code. Correct. You know, they are working on some exciting stuff. Uh, you know, there's a big open world that you can enjoy, a multiplayer and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, make sure to grab yourself a copy. We have multiple, multiple uh, game codes to give away today. Yes. So if you didn't win on the first few tries, don't worry, you're still in the drawing pool. And the more actions you perform on the link, the more chances you have at winning one of the codes today. Exactly. And don't worry, if the link doesn't work for you there, uh, our bot will also post it in the chat, as well as uh, the link to the um, voting process. So uh, as you can see, right under Choose the Parts, there is a short link. If you go to yep. that link, you can uh, make sure to cash your vote. And uh, well, if you don't want to look it up on the screen, I'll also post it in the chat. So uh, every um, five or six minutes to make sure you guys can uh, yeah, cash your vote. Correct. So yeah. participate, guys. And so for the graphics cards, I mean, you see them here already. Uh, we've of course got the RX 6800 XT Gaming X Trio, Oof. the beast itself. Uh, and we've got the RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio. So, I mean, uh, you could call them brothers, cousin, cousins, you know, but they're, they're definitely related. And in terms of performance, you know, they're, they're depending on what you're using, but yeah, they're not far off. And uh, one has the edge in ray tracing. The other one has the edge in, uh, from what I've seen in, uh, you know, lower uh, resolutions and high FPS. So, the uh, choice is up to you guys. So I hope you guys make a nice choice. Um, don't make it too difficult for me, please. I don't build PCs all day. So uh, yeah, there's bound to be some funny stuff happening. Um, the idea of this stream is also basically to take you through the process of building a PC uh, from, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty much, I have everything laid out over here already, but I do have everything, uh, like I've pretty much taken it out of the box. And then separately, I'm gonna, you know, do all the cabling and, and building it into a uh, case, uh, which I'll also take you through the components that we have there. Uh, in this case, for the power supply, I have chosen a 750 watt power supply, which is the MPG. A750GF, uh, also covered in one of our previous streams. Really nice power supply, more than enough to cover what I've got here, even though this is a really powerful build uh, with a, either an i9 or a Ryzen 9. So that's uh, kind of like, the, the, you know, short of Threadripper-ish things you, you're talking about top end. Um, and well, in this case, uh, with a RX 6800 XT or a, a 3080, we we're also talking pretty nice, uh, pretty spicy performance. But yeah, 750 uh, power supply, especially if it's uh, in this case 80 plus gold rated, should be uh, more than enough to handle it. Um, yeah, uh, other than that, what have I got? I've got a really nice cooler here that's been uh, shown not long ago. This is uh, our new K series cooler with the uh, the animated screen on it on the pump and uh, there's also a, a fan underneath that to cool the chipsets uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure but I, I hope I've got it complete I'm pretty sure I've got the mounting brackets for both AM4 yeah. and the Intel socket so yeah. if, if not uh, it's gonna be a short stream yeah you gotta <laughs> You gotta uh, cut us some slack. If only you guys knew yep. how many parts we had to gather. Well, Peter had. To it was gather. a scavenging like, hunt these uh, past few days. Yeah. yeah. It was. Uh, it, it wasn't easy. To offices, from buildings to buildings, to yes. gather everything. It was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Quite a feast to uh, put this all together. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this one's going to be on there. And and honestly, look at those cables. I'm not looking forward to this. I know that pretty pretty much half of them I'm not going to be using. But still, it's uh, they, the the thing I'm worst at when building a PC is cable management. So this is kind of like my freaking nightmare right here. Um, what I'm good at though is just you know picking the parts from whatever I have available. There's 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 you'll you'll be hard uh, hard pressed to find somebody who's better at googling stuff like what is what is the best. Uh, 
what is the best motherboard for, for, this, uh, for this CPU or you know, what is the best match. There's tons of content to find there. Um, so yeah, the, the, the gist of this stream is basically just what, what if you get all the components in um, and you just start building a PC, you know, what, what kind of things do you encounter? How do you solve them? Um, I bet I'm gonna encounter a lot of things today where I kind of have to try and explain my way out of it to both myself and hopefully in the process uh, help some of you guys. Yeah, uh, Forza, indeed. I'm uh, what is referred to as a normal person. As in like, you know, not, not a super geeky guy. Even though I'm surrounded by this stuff daily and I see it a lot. But, you know, actually building, I usually leave that up to other people. I enjoy seeing it done, but that's, uh, that's doing it myself. Part. Yeah, that is the fun part. I, I know it, it is. Well, it, it is when it actually works, and, and yeah. once you've got it up and running, and you know you can enjoy the games. Yeah, I'm sure you still remember the moments, you know, where where you put everything together, and it's like the first moment you have to push the button to see if it goes on. Like, oh and, man, and I've had some tense moments. moments there in the past, where <laughs> you know, I just then you and then you discover like, oh yeah, it might be a good idea to actually you know flick the switch on the power supply and then you know like turn it on. That that might help. Big brain. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, rubbing your head for like 10 minutes, like, what did I do wrong? What did I miss? <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, I'm okay. sure anybody, anybody who's been building it, you know, one of the first times you did it, it might be like that. But yes. How to vote? Uh, there is a link being shared in the chat every few minutes uh, where you can uh, vote, or you can go directly to the short link uh, mentioned above there. And there you can cast your vote. Uh, I think that, I'm not sure if it changes in real time, uh, Ja, or if we yeah, have it to refresh real time. it. It's been uh, okay. shuffling up. Like right now, we just jumped. So right now, it's looking like uh, AMD is on top for the CPU and the motherboard. And uh, in terms of the GPU, wow. Okay, you guys really like the uh, the 3080. Okay. Yeah. Well, That's you know, uh, the thing about the 3080 is this will give me a nice opportunity then, if I actually get it up and running in time uh, by the end of the stream, to show you guys how to uh, do the BIOS update to enable um, resize bar on one of these babies. Because uh, I've, I have chosen uh, motherboards that are both compatible with the uh, current resize bar or if you're using an AMD graphics card, uh, smart access memory or SAM feature which basically uh, allows the, the, um, uh, the, the CPU to directly address the memory modules on the graphics card. So it can help with performance in some games. We've seen that, uh, especially with testing from some media, but also our internal testing, we've seen that uh, it's not a consistent benefit yet. Uh, it, it's nice, it's promising. In some games like uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you can get up to, I think like 20, some, some benchmarks said 20% performance gain, which is Quite impressive, to be honest. Uh, but in some games, you can even get a decrease in performance. So it's not it's not a, a fix all end all just yet. Uh, but you know there is some promise there. So I can show you guys how to do that if the uh, 3080 indeed uh, gets chosen, because that one actually requires. Uh, I think any any card launched before the 3060 requires a BIOS update to be done uh, to be able to be compatible or use the resource bar feature on Nvidia cards. Uh, guys, I, I see there's some people in Facebook also uh, commenting in the chat, but uh, ah. just just to let you know, you know, we, we keep track of uh, many platforms, yes. including Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitch, Periscope, uh, you name it. But for the best experience, uh, <laughs> make sure to go to our YouTube chat, and there uh, we can really make sure that Peter can also read your chat because um, you know we, we use Restream to distribute uh, the, the the load and all the chat. Yes. But uh, we have some issues with Facebook, so it's hard for us to keep track of what you're saying in Facebook. So if you have any questions or any remarks, make sure to go to uh, YouTube for yep. the best experience. Yes. And um, I also see a lot of questions. Uh, some people asking about GPU size. This was actually a thing, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later on as well, when, when we get to the bit more hands-on part. Uh, but that's something I actually had to consider, because I wanted to use a higher-end GPU, uh, like a 3080 or a, a 6800 XT. So that meant I, I had to take into account that these are uh, big cards, right? So um, I was looking at like regular size mid tower cases that we had, um, but because of, especially because of the, the water cooling unit that I was, uh, well, I wanted to use and uh, I was uh, looking to include as well, especially on a high end CPU. Um, I was kind of limited in my options because I, you, you can fit these into a uh, well, most mid mid size mid towers cases basically, but um, 
Ideally, my idea was to mount it like, you know, on the top and then have this thing on the, on the CPU like this. But um, in a lot of cases, what you run into then is that the, the motherboard, it also has heat sinks at the top. So uh, that's actually, uh, th that will hit the, the fans or it will basically take the same space. So yeah, you get, a, uh, you get a, an issue there where you can't fit everything uh, at the top. So what you're left with then is to put it basically like that at the front of the case. Um, but then, of course, this takes some space on the front of the case, which means that in some cases you won't be able to fit the full length of a triple fan card uh, in the case itself either. So this is something if you are planning to build a new PC at any point or, or you know, just a PC right now and at some point a graphics card in the future and you're, you are looking at, you know, a triple fan solution. Uh, this is something to keep in mind. Uh, actually, in my home PC build, uh, I also ran into some of these issues where I had a really nice case uh, and I, I bought it with the idea in mind that, you know, I need to be able to fit a three fan card in there so I can actually sometimes take cards home to test and, you know, be a bit more familiar with them, get a good feel. Um, uh, but you know what? I even had a, a 240 uh, rad cooler so the basically it's uh it, it's not a three fan radiator but a, a two fan so it wasn't actually that huge like this one um, but even that i couldn't fit into the top with the motherboard i was using so i was uh i had to put this on the front and that meant i couldn't use a uh, triple fan card anymore so uh yeah that's something to keep in mind again i, I didn't really keep that in mind because i checked out uh beforehand all right, can all these components fit individually into the case? Which the answer was yes. But once you start putting them in there, you, you can run into stuff like that and, you know, um, get surprised by it sometimes. But to solve that today, what I've done is I've uh, kind of made it easier for myself. And I have, uh, well, we had this uh, case standing around for a while, which we hadn't used for a while. Ugh. That's a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So what do you do if you have concerns of do we have enough space? You just get more space, right? That's, uh, oh, right, um, the, the, the pole is blocking my face, but that's fine. Oh, we can help that. <laughs> All right. So yeah, basically what you do then is you get a, you get a bigger case. We're going to need a bigger case. So this is the Sekira 500X. And this is indeed a huge case, uh, to be fair. So. I mean, for most people, this is going to be a bit too big, but especially for the purpose of the stream as well. Uh, if you're going to try and build everything into a small thing, into a small form factor, I'm going to leave that stuff up to Mike once he's back, uh, because that's really his thing. He loves doing that. Uh, for me, I just like, you know, trying to get everything in there, see if it works. And I'm honestly even already, <clears throat> I'm already uh, worried that I'm not yeah, going to get it up and running uh, by the end of the stream. Cross so. fingers with this live stream. Exactly, yeah. If the power like shuts down, all of a sudden the stream ends, you know, you guys know what's going exactly. on. Exactly, yeah. Uh, there was a question regarding, uh, uh, we have somebody who was in the previous, uh, one of the previous live streams asking regarding uh, when the gaming chairs will come out that, uh, that I showed during the stream. Well, they plan to uh, be launched this month uh, uh, globally, so, uh, but it, it it doesn't mean that it's going to be for sure in your uh, local retailer. It <coughs> also depends, of course, on uh, you know if, if the retailer placed an order or uh, maybe uh, the, the shipment to that specific retailer uh, is a little bit later than the rest. So you got to really make sure to contact your uh, local retailer to make sure uh, when this will be because we have a planning, but this doesn't mean that uh, within the time frame, everybody will get the supply. So. And, and to be, uh, are these these chairs, uh, John, that we were talking about, or uh? Uh, that's uh, no, actually that one is, is right there. Know. We are we are already using outdated chairs. No, not really. These are really comfortable, to be honest. Very so, uh, comfortable. If you can find these, they're also really recommended. And these, uh, which one is this chair? This is the CH one hundred and ten. CH one hundred and ten. Yeah, this one is our, our well, let's just say the bad boy with the thickest padding. It is, yeah. So that's what makes it very comfortable. Yeah, it's, uh, so it's our king-sized uh, padding, which is why we love to sit on them. Exactly. Yeah, but you can you can tell, you know, it's. Uh, really you good can tell material. how happy we are every time we're in the live stream, right? Because we're sitting there. <laughs> we can we can get, sit uh, sit in these chairs, indeed. 
<laughs> right, so yeah, basically that's how I solve the problem for today. Uh, this, this will fit, well, I don't want to say everything, but, you know, pretty much anything I can, uh, I can throw at it. So yeah, that's one way to go about it. And, and I had the luxury of having this case around, so yeah, why not? Um, all right, so I'm going to just park this thing here for now. And in the meantime, uh, we want to see if I can show you guys some of the other components. And for that, I'm going to need a close-up cam. We've got some other components here as well. And that's, that's where the magic comes yeah. in, because uh, we're We've trying out a new this. thing. Where we're actually, it's not that I'm not interested in uh, doing a stream, guys. Um, but yeah, we are uh, trying a new thing where I'm actually going to try and use my phone, or the camera of my phone, to act as a close-up camera. I think we need to uh, reconnect it, yeah. Hopefully that'll work. Just a moment, did it, guys. Did it crash? Did it crash? Like we said, it's we were uh, yeah, we were testing this progress. extensively yesterday and today, and it was working like perfectly. Oh, there we go. Hey, it's back. yes. All right, now to see if oh, I think we need to uh, wait. I'll I'll do that. Uh, automatic focus continues. So yeah, we're trying to um, trying out a new thing where we are using uh, the phone. So as you can see here, I've got a. Um, Western Digital Black SN850. Sorry? No, I was, I was whispering to the chat. Someone ah. was saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, we're going to use this as a Gen 4 uh, M.2 NVMe SSD. So uh, yeah, especially if you're, if you're already using either an X570 motherboard for AMD or uh, the uh, what is it? Z, Z590 for Intel, uh, yeah, you want to make use of that uh, Gen 4 capability. So, uh, and I'm just going to use a single one today. Uh, I'm going to be installing the OS on this once it's uh, hopefully up and running. And for the memory, I'm using uh, G-Skill Trident Z. This is, uh, uh, you can see I've got only, uh, I think I only have, wait, yeah, this is eight gigs. So I've only got 16 gigs um, of 3600 megahertz. DDR4, uh, CAS latency 16, I believe. Yeah, uh, XMP2 ready, as you can see. Anyway, some really nice memory there as well. Uh, should be plenty fast. And uh, for what we are going to do, just putting together a build and uh, proving the concept, basically, or doing uh, the build, this should be uh, enough. Um, normally, you also get uh, on the uh, on the cooler, for example, on this thing. I've got it here. On this thing, you also get uh, thermal paste pre-applied, but yeah, since this one has already been used, I've uh, cleaned it off. And uh, so I'm gonna need to use some new thermal paste. Not to worry though, so I've got some here. Uh, Arctic Silver 5, which should be plenty, should be fine. It's not the best, it's definitely not the worst. It's, I think, one of the better ones, it's quite popular as well. It's on the market for quite a few years already, if, I'm, uh, if I recall correctly. Um, and uh, of course, you know, you can't build a PC without a Swiss Army knife, guys. If you've watched The Verge, you know, and oh, it's, no. <laughs> it's, it's even got a, a Phillips no. head. It's even got the Phillips head on here. Here you go. For the memes, guys, you need that. <laughs> No, just kidding. Of course, what is useful is to have a uh, like one of these kits that has all the uh, all the different heads on it, uh, screwdrivers and stuff like that, and even a pincer, so that if you need something, we still need to figure out a stand for the phone, guys. So uh, that's I'm sorry if I'm uh, making you guys seasick, but yeah, you know, having all the tools in here, a pincer if you need if you need to bend some pins, stuff like that. Um, all right, let's see if I can show you guys the CPUs as well. Uh, most of you guys will probably know this, but I'm going to show you guys anyway. There is, of course, a nice, uh, a, well, not nice, but a difference physically, quite clear difference between AMD and Intel CPUs. I'm just going to take this one out of the box as well. This is a one-handed unboxing, guys. So it's, it feels like skills. having one hand tied behind my back. And Eric was suggesting doing that because he once did a blindfolded build. So he said, like, I, I think you should do this build like, you know, one hand tied behind your back. I guess uh, he got what he wanted anyway, or at least feels like it for this part. 
luckily or hopefully the rest of the part doesn't uh, feel like that. Anyway, um, well, I think this speaks for itself, right? This is the Ryzen here, the Ryzen 9. Let's see if we can get the reflection just right. Yeah. As you see, it's the uh, 5950. Ooh, can we see that? Yes. And then here we have the Intel Core i9, 11900K. So much processing power. Yes. Oh, well, not so much processing power going on here. See, uh, all right, so what happened is uh, apparently my, uh, my internet is disconnected for a second. Uh, ja, I think we can try again. So yeah, we were just trying this out first time uh, with the uh, camera using the, the phone camera for uh, the stream. And sometimes it will cut out because the connection will drop or something, but uh, yeah. And I think we're back. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, so the, the big difference is of course, well, you can see there's a difference in the size, but uh, the, the biggest difference is uh, on the back of these CPUs. Now, AMD CPUs have these pins on them where Intel just has like contact points, basically. So as you can see here, I'm gonna try and see if I can make this look really sexy for you guys. But the AMD CPU has all these pins. I mean, they, this is like a really cool tool that you can actually use. I'm gonna see if I can slide this down the table and then zoom in a bit to check if all the pins are still, oh, are still, uh, you know, aligned and uh, in the right order. Yeah, boys, we're getting into uh, cinematography. Oh yeah. Look at them pins. And here you can also see the um, the side of the silicon, basically, or the, the PCB, basically, that it's, it's built on. But yeah, so you have rows and rows and rows of these tiny, tiny pins. And those will stick into the socket. And that's, that's what AMD has been doing for a long time. And also why AMD CPUs are infamous for if you accidentally drop them or you know push them into the socket the wrong way and apply a bit of pressure you can very easily bend some of these pins and once you do obviously that's going to have consequences for the processor and, and how it works or doesn't work anymore so yeah bent pins is a uh, amd um, bane i would say of the the, the amd cpu some people is uh, daring you to bend one in the chat. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, you know if I if I had the experience of, no -no. <laughs> of unbending them, which I know some people have, and it it it's supposedly it's not that difficult, but not having any experience in doing that whatsoever, um, I don't want to risk it because again this we only have one of these CPUs and I borrowed it. I'm saying borrowed it, but I might have to still notify people that I took it. Um, <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah. Uh, I borrowed it from uh, our FAE colleagues, uh, Ruth and Peter, uh, who are sometimes yeah, uh, a guest on our uh, live streams indeed. So they, <laughs> yeah, they use these CPUs to, to test and bench a lot of things to make sure and, and also to support, um, you know, if there are any issues with them, they can verify solutions, they can help to test things. So yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, and then by contrast, the, the Intel CPU, the underside, the bottom side here, you can see there are these um, contact points basically, these, these gold copper contact points. But if I, if I look at it from the side, it's pretty much, you know, it's completely flat. So with the Intel CPUs, I'm not that scared to just, you know, drop it on, on the edge like this and it doesn't matter. It's very hard to damage. You still shouldn't. You shouldn't be. Uh, you shouldn't be too rough with it, of course, because there are some capacitors on the back there, which you know, if, if enough force is applied and then uh, friction, you can damage that, and that probably will be the end of your uh, CPU. So really? don't don't do that. But uh, yeah, it, it's considerably less uh, vulnerable, I would say. Uh, but you know, to be fair, once it's in the socket, uh, also an AMD CPU. Uh, it should be secure and there, there shouldn't be any issue whatsoever. It's just, you know, that, that those few moments, seconds, maybe minutes for some people, um, you know, that this thing spends out of the socket or being transitioned, that could be, uh, yeah, that, that it's quite vulnerable and that, that could be damaging some pins. And then, you know, afterwards you just think, oh, damn it, how do I fix this? 
Um, yeah. So yeah, as you can see, I'm I'm completely focused on looking on my phone. So I'm sorry I'm not looking into the camera, but uh, yeah. I, I I imagine you guys are also focusing on. Uh, the imagery but yeah this is one of the things that we can now do and i think this is much better quality uh camera visuals than we can do with our uh typical close-up cam that we've done in the past also if we want to look at uh you know individual components oh and we've lost connection again and i think we are now just getting it back yeah i think you can reconnect so yeah this happens every now and again it's a bug of some sort so I, we have to still figure <coughs> this out yeah it's funny you know this kind of stuff never happens when you uh prepare <laughs> this beforehand yeah. yeah but i think it should start working again soon i hope yes but yeah if you want to look at you know some very close-up uh, shots of components uh let's see oh, oh the focus is i think off again so i have to Enable it again. But yeah, if we want to look at really close up components and, uh, you know, see very small details, this will allow us to do that. So in, in uh, future teardowns, uh, this, hopefully this should make it a lot more interesting to see more detail. Because, I mean, you can clearly see, I mean, we are using like a one huge mouse mat uh, or mouse pad surface on this table, which is ideal for things like this for handling, you know, delicate hardware and stuff like that but um, yeah it's uh, if you look at it very close up you can see the the, the fiber fabric um, all right let's now then uh, switch to the main view ja, and then uh, I'll grab the motherboard because obviously you've got the CPUs then but uh, that will also then translate into different sockets and uh, how they deal with connecting the CPU to the motherboard and perhaps before you continue oh yes i think it's time yes you can do that i yes. will uh, handle the motherboards then and uh, try to resecure mm -hmm. the cpus before i accidentally do bend one of the pins and we get into that hell <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh i noticed there are quite some repetitive questions uh oh in the chat do regarding tell when do we think the supply for 3080, for example, will increase? Uh, this is always a recurring question. Always, and unfortunately, yes. we, we still don't have an answer because the, the, the truth is we don't know. Uh, the, 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 because it's all got to do with demand and supply. And uh, both of those, we, we don't have exact numbers, but we do see that the demand just seems to be freaking never ending at the moment. Um, so I, I don't think many companies have um, yeah, ha have dealt with the situation quite like this before. I mean, of course, there is always, you know, whenever a new ge generation launches, and if, especially if it's a very interesting product, you will have uh, a big demand for a while, and then at some point the, the uh, supply catches up with it. Uh, but it, I don't think it's been quite at this extent yet. And this, I mean, it doesn't just uh, go for uh, for graphics cards. This also goes for all other kinds of components at the moment, even even the automotive industry. Uh, have uh, apparently a shortage um, and there's there's a lot of theories out there about what it could be I mean you know these companies they buy in a certain um, capacity of producing components and products well in advance I, I don't want to say years but uh, maybe not far off they have to reserve this capacity to produce it so once you get into a situation that there is a shortage there you, you can't just you know magically create more producing capacity out of nowhere at least not on a short term that's very difficult because these companies like tsmc or uh, samsung who, who are uh, producing the uh, nvidia gpus for example you can you can be damn sure that they're trying to be at all times at uh, you know pretty near 100%, 90% capacity. So they, they could scale up maybe a little bit, but not that much. Um, so yeah, you know, once you find yourself in a situation like this, that there's there's no real uh, way of, of saying, all right, well, let's just friggin' ramp up production and you know, uh, solve it that way. So yeah, it's 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 a tough one. Um, hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. I think so John has some people, uh, or can, is, is about to make some people happy. So, John, take it away while I fill my yep. uh, cup. Let's uh, start. Uh, let's start this with a bang. We uh, picked out two winners actually. Oh. So the first Spicy. one is Akio Susan. 
Congratulations, Kyo Susan or Susan. Hope you have fun with it. Um, the next one is Karsten. 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 Uh, yeah, I think I pronounced it right. Yeah. I hope so. Uh, congratulations to you too. Um, yeah, we will contact you by email in the coming days. Um, so, and then you can claim your code and redeem it in the game launcher. So, um, yeah. <coughs> One of them, uh, once again, used the uh, loyalty bonus. Oh. Uh, because we do yes. see this uh, very often in the last few months. We started with this like a few months ago, and uh, yeah, it does seem to help with uh, people winning. Yes. And yeah. How you can claim the loyalty bonus yeah. that, well, it builds up. The more often you uh, visit our live streams, the more loyalty bonus you get. So, yeah. And this, in turn, will also, uh, well, hide, um, well, it, it will. You can apply Get that. It's basically extra points that you yeah. can put into the mix uh, at your disposal. So the more you view our live stream, and I think it's actually it goes by uh, participating in the giveaway each time. So the more times you've participated in our in our live stream uh, in the uh, giveaway, the system registers that basically. And uh, I mean. It, I think it already starts from the second time you participate. You can you get some extra points that you could throw in there. There's a button in there once you uh, again say you want to participate. There's a button in there which says claim loyalty bonus. You can do that each and every stream. Uh, you don't lose your points by doing that, uh, but you will then apply them into the draw, which gives you a better chance of winning. Basically, that's it because it's like a randomized thing in the background, the script that will draw the winners. Um, so yeah, the more points you have, statistically speaking, the more chance you have to win. That, that, that's basically it. Yeah, definitely tune in, guys. Uh, so let's see how the voting part is going. Well, still uh, Ryzen 9 uh, is going strong <laughs> and RTX 3080 is still very dominating. All right, all right. And I just checked the stats. Uh, seems like we have already a little bit over 200 people voting. So Damn. awesome, guys. Yep. Definitely keep voting. Maybe we can turn the tides. But if this is how it stays, yeah. uh, we'll yeah. see in just a minute uh, when Peter will decide to uh, start with the build. Yeah, we just want to show a few, have time to few more things. But yeah, after that, I think we can start. Uh, Horace Foka is asking, is this something you do regularly, regularly gents? Uh, depends on what you're talking about. Uh, building a PC on stream, yeah, sometimes. Uh, mostly we, we're talking about new components whenever they come out and showing you the deep dives and the ins and outs. Uh, if you're talking about uh, giving away free game codes or free stuff, then yes, uh, I, I do believe that happens pretty much every stream for quite yeah. a long time already, yeah. yeah. I see uh, the Ryzen 9 just uh, <laughs> jumped back a little bit. Oh, Still quite far ahead. All right. Uh, okay, so uh, just want to show you guys, because we were talking about some... Um, I think we have to reconnect again. Uh, but yeah, we were talking about uh, the CPUs and the sockets. Let's see if it will connect. Oh, the stream itself. Yes, uh, every Wednesday, uh, actually. Unless there is a, a big... Uh, product launch, for example, which sometimes happens on a Thursday. Uh, NVIDIA likes doing that. So then we will sometimes shift our schedule to, to match that, uh, because then we can cover things on basically day one from the launch. Um, yeah, so, but mostly it's, it's our weekly Wednesday live stream, yeah. You're welcome to join anytime you want. Uh, oh, we're having some, some connectivity issues, I think. But yeah, here is the um, AM4 socket. Once the, ooh, there is a big, big delay <laughs> in here now. Now you just have very, very steady hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, the, this is the uh, the socket, the M4 socket, and you can basically see all the holes in there. That's where all the pins will go in. Ah, oh, this is a shame. I think we might have to. Uh, can yeah. you try to? Can you try to close the program, and uh, then I I will try to close this one as well. See if this helps. It's like, have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> and yeah. Otherwise, we still can. Uh, yeah. We try can. the Wi-Fi. Exactly. We can. We can. We can always try that. But uh, let's just try it first. Uh, yes, I, I will be using a MSI motherboard, Finlay Lord. That's. Uh, I, I thought that would go without saying, because we. I don't know about anybody else here in the building, but we don't have any other brands laying around at our disposal here either. So, yeah. Ah, but I think we've got some, some pretty nice uh, motherboards here. A pretty nice selection. 
Okay, I think this one has connected again. Let me try and start up the app again that will connect it. Yep. And there is again some delay. <coughs> yeah, uh, I think we're just having a search in uh, the internet bandwidth. Yeah, it could very well be. It's just like before. That's, that's a shame though. Yeah, no, well, wondering. perhaps you can just hold it still because you want to show the socket, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So we can we can do that. Here we go. So yeah, you can see this is the AM4 socket. Um, if you're familiar with it, you will recognize it. Uh, there is no metal bracket around it where the Intel one does. I'll show you that in a minute. But here you can clearly see all the little holes where, of course, the pins will, will go into. So yeah, if you've got any bent pins, that's going to be an issue, of course. So that's also where the problem comes from with bent pins. You simply then won't be able to yeah, slot them into the socket uh, correctly. Uh, one thing to always keep in mind is uh, on the bottom of the CPU there will always be a little triangle showing you that there is basically only one way of putting it in directly. And on the motherboard there is also a tiny, tiny little triangle to match that on the CPU. And I'm going to see how long it takes for my finger to show up in this one as well. But on, in the top left corner you can see there is a very small little triangle there. Yeah, I think the feed has almost stopped refreshing. On my phone I can see it, but uh, on the screen that, that's showing to you guys, I don't think it is, but yeah. So there is a very small, tiny little triangle to, to kind of indicate uh, which corner should be there. Yes, triangle in the top left, yeah. It's very tiny, it's very easy to miss, to be fair. So that's also for, for some four time, uh, first timers, for example, people who, who build their PC for the first time. This could be one of the things where they get hung up on like, how do I put it in the slot uh, correctly? Because it's, it's very easy to miss. Um, yeah, and then for the rest, it's basically just, uh, you know, a story of, uh, yeah, uh, putting it in securely, which involves uh, just uh, putting down a little uh, metal latch uh, and then it will lock into place. <coughs> um, yeah, I think, mm, I think we, we might... In uh, the meantime, there's yes. somebody asking what keyboard are you using? Um, <coughs> nothing at the moment, but what I've got on my <coughs> table here is the GK50 Elite with uh, box white switches. Tactile. Yes. Uh, well, it's uh, audible and tactile indeed. Uh, so they are box switches, uh, mechanical switches, of course. <coughs> um, and yeah, really comfortable keyboard, really nice as well. Uh, very satisfying to type on. It's one of my favorites as well as one of Mike's, I know. Um, yeah, all around, just a great keyboard. Really good value as well for a, a mechanical keyboard. So these switches will last a long, long time. And especially with the box white uh, variant. Uh, we did a whole stream about this, I think somewhere last year when this product got uh, introduced. Uh, it's a great product. I love it. Uh, also, what motherboard are we going to use? Well, that depends on... Uh, well, your, that I depends think, uh, entirely on your choice, <laughs> yeah. indeed. But as it stands, I think uh, it's going to be a, a X570 motherboard. It, it is looking like it, indeed. So, uh, in that case, then, it looks like it will be the uh, X570 Ace. Uh, can you try uh, pull oh, yeah, up feed again? I think, uh, I think it's, it's working. Uh, it works. Yeah. And probably now that we switch to it, it's going to not... It's going to unwork itself. Anyway, so uh, just to get back to that point, there's a little dot here as well to indicate it. And in case you miss it, there's like this tiny, tiny triangle here, if you can see it. Really tiny. So that's it. Um, and these are the things that can guide you on, you know, where you need to put the uh, little triangle on the CPU as well. Because on the bottom of the CPU, there's also a little triangle, so you need to match those. And then once you put it in, uh, this latch should be up when you put it in and then once the the cpu is in the in the, the pins are in the slot what you do is you just gently pull down the latch and as you can see what happens then is it i'm not sure if we can show that better but it just um switch yeah just slides into place gently so basically it, lo it will lock the pins into place there's not a whole lot of force uh involved in this and that's it and then your your cpu is securely uh locked into place 
And then we're going to look at the Intel socket. So uh, this is, uh, I'm not exactly sure which socket, but it's a, a 12XX. <laughs> Honestly, this is not this is not my strong suit. These sockets, but yeah, for the uh, 11900K. But as you can see here, very clear difference here is the AMD socket is pretty much all plastic, uh, and there's there's no pins inside here because the, the pins that that connect the CPU to the motherboard are, are the ones you stick in here with the CPU. Whereas the Intel socket has a metal bracket around it, which will completely uh, pretty much you know envelop the the CPU once you put it in and then lock it into place. Um, and to open it up, you simply also, you know, un, uh, loosen the latch basically and then lift it up like this. But here you can see the, the big difference is where the uh, AMD CPU has the pins on the CPU itself. The Intel uh, CPU or the socket basically has, well, what you can call pins sticking out uh, from the socket. So that's where uh, the, the biggest difference comes from. I'm going to try and see if I can show this better by zooming in a bit. But yeah, there are like little, yeah, little pins sticking up from the motherboard, from the socket. And those will connect with the uh, underside of the CPU once you, uh, once you lock it in place. So yeah, uh, and of course, once you buy a motherboard like this, there will be a little uh, plastic cap uh, in this socket, basically to cover this part so it's protected. But once you take that off, uh, this is also of course quite vulnerable. So if you drop, accidentally drop like a screwdriver on, on top of this, I've, I've seen damage like this before where uh, people dropped something in here uh, on top of those pins and then some of these pins were uh, uh, bent. That's also, uh, I, I'm not saying it's, it's end of story at that point. I think you can if you have a, a really good magnifying glass and very steady hands and a very tiny, like a razor blade or something that, you can, you know, one by one try to uh, try to realign them, but it's that's gonna suck if you if you have to do that. So yeah, but yeah, th those are the the main differences of uh, if you know for for first time builders or people who are you know not that familiar with these uh, sockets and and the differences between Intel and AMD. These are some of the major differences that you're gonna see. Um, yeah. And then of course, well, we're going to be using uh, M.2, so that's going to be uh, the first, uh, the top slot on either one of the motherboards, and it's looking like it's going to be this one. Um, and for the memory, uh, yeah, I mean, also again, I don't know how many people are uh, very familiar with this, but very tiny letters here are telling you uh, if you're only going to use uh, two of the four available slots. Uh, Please don't just jam them into the two slots closest to the CPU. That's not how this works. Uh, how it works is described on the motherboard itself. So it tells you you're going to have to use the uh, second slot first and then the slot most on the right if you're basically looking from the bottom of the motherboard. So that means this one. And basically what you can do then is you can already open the uh, little latches here. So you make your, your life a bit easier, you don't forget about it, you just open them. And once you uh, have got the CPU inside uh, in the motherboard already, and uh, usually, ideally also the cooler may be already attached, but you can do it uh, beforehand, then you can uh, put the RAM modules in there, lock them into place, and that's it. Same goes for, uh, for Intel motherboards, by the way. Uh, I do believe this is standard practice on uh, on most MSI motherboards, or I think all of them, that we have like a fine print on the board to help guide you, you know, how to do this. So, same thing. There you go. Um, yeah, I think that's okay for now. Anything else you guys want to see? Close up. Now we have the uh, the opportunity, and then now that it's working, for now. <laughs> this well, usually occurs with stock thermal paste with factory installed. Uh, I must have missed part of that conversation. Sorry, guys. But Intel sockets are far better than AMD's. Yeah, it depends on how you look at it. I think they're both okay. They're both fine. Are we going Intel or AMD? Well, that remains the question. Ja, maybe uh, take us to the uh, take us to the score and see see what the score is. Well, it seems like uh, it's very predominantly AMD. Oof. 
and Nvidia. when it comes to CPU and motherboard choice, hmm. and Nvidia for the GPU choice. So we're gonna have a crisscross, I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm not really sure if you call it a crisscross. I mean, yes, AMD also has a graphics card in in the Radeon, but uh, yeah, this uh, this is a match that can be made quite nicely, I think. I think I'm Finlay Lord is saying, I think I'm sure I should do a, a red triangle in the socket, which matches with the brand color. Make it stand out for <laughs> helping newbies. Win-win. Or make it RGB. Yeah, that might be even better. Uh, the problem with RGB is that it kind of needs to be powered before you can actually see it. So, yeah. By the time you actually power it up, you, you better hope that you've got it right, because otherwise you might have a problem. Uh, what is the difference between MEG, MAG, MPG motherboards? Uh, that's actually a good question. Um, we've basically made a um, yeah a distinction based on series. So MAG is uh, I, I don't want to see the entry say the entry level, but it is our um, bottom tier when, when you compare those three. MAG stands for uh, MSI Arsenal Gaming. So you will see also in the, reflected in the names that they are, for example. Tomahawk, uh, Grenade, Bazooka, I think, I'm not sure if all of them are still there, Torpedo. So they've got like, you know, weapon systems names, uh, the arsenal of, uh, of MSI. Um, and then you go to MPG, which is MSI uh, Performance Gaming, if I'm not mistaken, right? I think it stands uh, for performance. Sorry, sorry, I was reading the chat, what did you oh. say? Because I think, you're, well, my products, as in, I'm responsible for graphics cards yeah. and uh, yeah, well, generally uh, keyboards and stuff they, like that. So they, they don't really yeah. use those distinctions, but uh, your products also do, yeah. right? I have many, many, many me. Actually, uh, <laughs> pretty much all of uh, my gaming desktops and monitors and chairs, they all come yes. with uh, MAG, Arsenal Gaming, yes. MPG, Performance Gaming, performance, and MEG, yeah, Emphasis yeah. Gaming. So MSI, so, uh, sorry, yeah. MPG means MSI, because the question was, uh, I guess you missed it, uh, Ja, but the question was, what is the difference between those series? Uh, so I'm, I'm also, I'm already explaining, you know, they mean different things. Yeah. MPG is uh, um, MSI Performance Gaming. So those are a little bit higher segment. You're more likely to find more elaborate uh, features there, uh, more uh, in, in terms of motherboards, for example, if you're looking at that, uh, they will usually have a bit uh, of a beefier heatsink, for example, and uh, a bit, um, was it the PWM? The, the the power components will probably be a bit beefier. They might have more M.2 slots and uh, a bit better uh, cooling solution on them. Uh, but also some more, you'll already find a bit more, uh, for example, RGB, elaborate RGB solutions and stuff like that. Uh, when you go to MEG, that's uh, enthusiast segment. So that's MSI enthusiast gaming. And enthusiast uh, means it's basically the high end. So there you find the, the ace that we've got here, that's MEG, and uh, the godlike is one of them. And I think the godlike is one of the more extreme examples when it comes to motherboards. Yeah. Uh, so that has pretty much all the features. And, and uh, you know, if you want the best of the best, that's pretty much what you go for. Yeah. Um, um, with the ace, for example, that's uh, a little bit toned down in terms of some of the elaborate features. It still has some really nice RGB, for example, but uh, not quite as elaborate as, as Godlike. Doesn't have an animated uh, OLED screen, for example, which Godlike has. Um, but it still retains a lot of the uh, ingredients that, for example, a very beefy uh, PWM solution and, and uh, a lot of M.2 uh, connectors with uh, pretty much all of them uh, Gen 4 in this case. So uh, you still, you're, you're not missing out on pretty much any of the performance. Um, so yeah. That's pretty much your choice. And yeah. also, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm forgetting a lot of things, I'm pretty sure. I mean, you know, Mike and Eric would be here slapping my, uh, slapping my, uh, <laughs> no, slapping me if, if, if they were. So, but yeah, yeah, you'll also find things like, you know, on the connectivity side. So, of course, uh, the higher end motherboards will, for example, have a two and a half gig or maybe multiple two and a half gig uh, um, LAN connectors. They will have more uh, and a higher end USB connectors, so more speed. So, yeah, there's a lot of differences there. Yeah, generally, you know, it really comes down to uh, the yeah. most elaborate features and yes. the best performance. So the higher you go in our segment, the yeah. more you can expect. 
But that doesn't mean that like our MAG, our starting point, is going to lack any performance for you. No. no. It just means that you know, there yeah. are very, very serious, good, no-nonsense products that yes. can get you from A to B without any problem. It's just when you require more enough of the features yes. and more performance. You know, if you want to have the best overclocking performance, you go for MEG Godlike, for example. So yeah, it's, it's really just stepping up as to what do you really want to get out of your products. Yeah. And if you're familiar with our graphics card lineup, for example, you know, we have Ventus, which is more, you know, focusing on the essentials. It won't have RGB and stuff like that. And it's a, it's a little bit, uh, you know, it doesn't have all the luxury features, but it focuses on the essentials. It's, it's kind of like that with MAG. Uh, it focuses on the essentials and it does that very good. Uh, but if you want more uh, of the, the luxury features or even faster connectivity, even more connectivity, then you're going to be looking at a bit of the higher end segment, which is, for example, MPG or MEG, so, but uh, uh, N-I-W-I, yeah. Niwi, I don't know if we can call you that, but uh, yeah, they, they already replied and said, yeah, thanks, I get it. Uh, yeah, so. and uh, there's also people, uh, some people asking regarding uh, what are going to use to cool the CPU, for example, the 5950X. So yeah. here we have the, our, our newest uh, core liquid, K360, yes. with a triple fan setup. Exactly. To make sure you're uh, <laughs> going to have a very comfortable and smooth and no throttling yeah. gaming performance. Yeah. All uh, right. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think we can pretty much stop the vote, right? Because, I mean, we, we already planned like yeah. to do like half an hour of votes. I think we're already almost an hour in. So in order to kind of move things along and actually get building, um, I think we, yeah. we, can, we should it's close the vote. for some action. Yeah. So it's going to be the AMD Ryzen 9. 5950X, right there, so the, the one with all the pins that I showed you guys. Uh, and in combination with the X570 ACE MEG motherboard, uh, I actually, uh, <laughs> while uninstalling this motherboard, I took it out of another build. I actually, uh, this little bracket from the back of the motherboard came off, which is supposed to stay on. Probably uh, I was a bit too rough with it, but yeah, it's, it's uh, the, the rear end uh, bracket of the CPU cooler basically where you have to mount the the cooler to it's no problem though i just have to kind of keep it in place myself uh, and uh, watch out that it doesn't uh, drop off in the end otherwise i'm gonna have a hard time actually attaching any kind of cooler to this so yeah we're gonna say goodbye for now to uh, the z590 uh gaming yes. carbon wi-fi if you want to know more about this product by the way and the i9 uh, you can check out last week's stream after this one. Uh, last week, Eric and I think it was you, right, Ja? No? Uh, no, it was uh, oh. FA, Ruth. Yeah, it was Ruth, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Eric and Ruth had uh, a guest from Intel even, uh, and they, uh, yeah, they discussed at length the new uh, Intel platform and uh, everything that, uh, that it offers. So yeah, if you want to know more about that, featuring this motherboard and of course the i9, so you can find more uh, information about that in last week's stream. For now, I'm gonna gently put it away and uh, for the graphics card, I think uh, I saw that. Yeah, it was pretty clear. We uh, we were going for the. Uh, I was I was kind of hoping it, it wouldn't come to this because actually, the 3080 uh, has uh, three eight-pin connectors, whereas the uh, 60 uh, 6800 XT only has two. So that would you know <laughs> save me a little bit of work and a little bit of cabling. But you know, for you guys, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, yeah, so it's going to be this. Uh, that's a hell of a build, guys. That should be a beautiful build that performs great. Um, okay, so when you get started, you get the components. Basically, you need to make sure you've got everything. Uh, I, I kind of hope I didn't forget anything, but uh, we'll find out. Wow, what's the fun enough for getting anything? Oh, uh, well... <laughs> For the viewers, if, if your goal is to have a working PC or kind of to show people how you do these kind of things, you kind of want to make sure that you actually, you know, have all the things that you need and uh, to actually show it. Anyway, um, but what I found is sometimes, you, you know, we have a, a surface that's actually pretty good for, for, you know, building stuff like this on. But not every surface is that suitable. For example, if you're working on some floors or something, you don't want uh, too much static electricity building up, for example. So like a big mouse pad surface, something like that. It's kind of soft, so it won't damage anything. You can shift things around, uh, but it also uh, kind of helps to dissipate any static electricity uh, a little bit. 
But what I've done sometimes in a pinch is, uh, and I don't have the box of the actual motherboard here, but you can actually just put, uh, yeah. while assembling some of these things, you can actually put it on the box of the motherboard itself. Uh, right now, what I do have here is, for example, the box of a graphics card. Oh, see, here comes the, the bracket again. I'm just gonna try and keep it in place. Because every time I lift off the motherboard, it kind of drops to the table. Um, but yeah. So a box like this, if you're not sure what surface to use, if you just use the box, for example, of the motherboard or of the graphics card, that's fine. Um, and you can just place it on there. And if you want, you can, you know, usually it comes in a bag of anti-static uh, plastic. You can, to be extra sure, you can put that under here. Um, or even there's like a foam layer, I think, uh, on top of the motherboard sometimes in the box as well. You can also put that to give it some extra cushioning, that's fine. Um, but you can then just put it on there uh, like so. So if you're, if you're not sure, you know, what kind of surface is okay to, to build on, uh, this is one that comes with the product itself. So uh, yeah, don't forget the tweezer. I know, guys, uh, I'm looking for my tweezer. Here's my tweezer. Got it, got it. Uh, yeah, I mean, all jokes aside, um, it's uh, it's not that hard uh, building a PC once you know how to do it. But if it's the, you know the first time you have to do it, it's it's quite it can be quite overwhelming because there's a hell of a lot that you kind of have to know to not get it wrong. Um, okay, so step one, we've got the motherboard here. Uh, we're gonna take the CPU out of the packaging. Uh, this is not the original packaging. Normally you'll have it in like some small plastic thingy uh, that you take out of a bigger box probably with a cooler in it. Um, and then we're gonna open up the slot like I showed you before already. And then we're gonna try and uh, find uh, the, uh, the little triangle. Maybe I can show you guys this with the close-up cam again. Let's see if it still works. Still works. Yep. Yes. So as you can see, this is the underside of the CPU and uh, only in one of the corners, as you can see there's other corners, but only in one of the corners is like this really small golden um, triangle. And that has to match up with what I showed you earlier with this corner right here. So flipping it over gently. Again, this is where I think most of these things get damaged that people just pick it up and then whoops. They, they accidentally drop it onto the board or something. I'm always afraid that's gonna happen to me. Luckily, it hasn't happened yet. And then basically, all you have to do is drop it in, that's it. You don't have to push it in there, nothing like that. Just drop it in and you'll feel when it's in there. It's, that's fine. And then what you do is you just gently uh, push down the little lever, secure it into place, and that's it. That's the CPU done. Uh, it's, it's in the socket, it's not going anywhere. Um, then, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, connect the or put in the RAM. So RAM only goes in one way. Again, um, I've showed you guys which slots to use, but also one side of the uh, teeth, basically the, the the connectors, is longer than the other. So if you don't, uh, if you find yourself, you know, having to apply too much force when putting it in, uh, just you know, you can always just check to be sure, am I actually holding it the right way? Because you're, if you're doing it the wrong way, you might uh, damage it accidentally. Uh, there is some force required to, to push it in, which is especially fun if there's like really sharp and thin heat sinks on top of the RAM module like this one. So you're gonna gently push it in and then you should hear a click. So I, maybe if I get closer with my mic, you can hear it like that. And that's the little, little latch just, you know, Very snapping satisfying. closed. Click. And the other one. So you can basically, what you can do there is you can do one side first and then wedge it the other side in as well. And that's it. So there is, again, there's a little bit of force uh, required to, to put them in correctly, but it shouldn't be that much. And a second one. And there we go. That's the RAM sorted. The other part we want to fix right now um, and this in the past, if you built PCs in the past, this might be different because there you had like separate hard drives, uh, even two and a half inch SATA SSDs, for example. You could connect those afterwards once you've pretty much put all everything in the PC already because then you just connect them on the side of the motherboard with a SATA uh, cable. With M.2s, it's a bit different because they are actually physically on the board, of course. So what you have to do there is you have to uh, then grab a screwdriver 
and uh, disconnect. I'm not going to see, or sorry, disconnect. Um, <laughs> You have, uh, maybe we can, yeah, here we go. So you have multiple slots here. As you can see, this board has uh, three of them, each of them also covered by a little heatsink. And then there's a little screw at the end of it here, which if you then uh, this, just loosen that up, and you should be able to lift the little cover off. Oh, maybe, I don't think I've turned it quite enough yet. Here we go, that should be it. So you can just lift it out gently. Again, no pressure. There's a little thermal pad in here uh, on the top side. Usually if the motherboard is new, there will be like a little blue film covering this as well. So you, you'll need to uh, pull that off in order to uh, actually make the thermal pad connect to the uh, M.2 SSD. Otherwise, there's a protective layer there which doesn't help with heat dissipation. For now, we can just put this to the side. Uh, you'll also see there's actually a screw already in here. Mostly there will not be, but there will be one delivered with your uh, motherboard. And these screws are friggin' tiny, uh, the M.2 screws. So really easy to lose if you're, uh, if you're not careful or clumsy. Uh, I'm speaking from experience here, because as you can see, this is just, yeah, I mean, it's tiny. Anyway, uh, you'll need to take that out because we are going to use this to fix the M.2 SSD into the slot later on. Uh, this little rubber block here can stay in place. This helps as a spacer to uh, basically keep the SSD from dipping too deep uh, and touching the board. Um, there's only one way to put this SSD in correctly, as you can see, because it's uh, <coughs> asynchronous. Uh, what is it? Um, yeah, it, it, there's only one way of putting it in correctly. Yeah. Oh, asymmetrical, sorry, yeah. So as you can see, we're just going to align this up like so. And then gently push it in. I just need a little bit of a hold here because I'm doing it with one hand again. Uh, and once you've got it in, um, and it's not very, it doesn't have to be pushed in very far, so it, it doesn't require that much force. Uh, this uh, little thing here, this little space here, this half round space should align with this uh, screw standing up here, this spacer. And that's basically where you're going to then connect uh, or put this little screw to fix it in place. I will need two hands with that, so I'm just gonna put the camera down for now. Yes. <laughs> I've lost an M.2 screw before. Yeah, it's, uh, I know how that feels. And every time you, when you vacuum your room and you hear something going up the, up the vacuum cleaner, you're like, oh, damn, was that it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you heard the, the little rattling sound. Yep, <laughs> yep. You're like, oh, damn, yep. Been no, there, no, that. That'll probably be it. Okay, and uh, once you've done that, you just put the um, M.2 shield frother or the, the cover basically uh, back onto the SSD, which is basically just putting it into place gently. Uh, putting the screw hole over the, uh, there's another uh, spacer there as well. And then, you know, you don't have to push it down very hard, uh, but just give it a, a nice turn with the screwdriver until it's uh, fixed in place. And that's it. That's the M.2 drive uh, also already put there. Now then, um, I think, what am I going to do first? Am I going to do the case first or am I going to do... Well, you can think about it and uh, in the meantime... Yes. You I can do a giveaway. I play Santa Claus again. Yes, you do uh, that. And Inferno is also saying... Buy me some time, damn it! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> Inferno is saying, great idea for stream today because he was uh, looking into building or buying a pre-build today. All right. So, yeah. If you have any questions, drop in the chat. That's why we're here. Yep. All right, let's see. What about the next winners? So, just uh, trying to handpick with the system that randomizes it. <laughs> and don't worry, if you haven't participated, just still go to the link that's on the poster right there or uh, keep an eye on the chat because there we will also drop the direct link to the giveaway. And it seems like we have the winners. All right. You know, I'm just going to ride a wave. I know we started with two. We're going to continue with two. So Jazz on the roll, guys. Two winners are 
Giga Ram. Giga Ram. Giga Ram. I like that name, man. Badass name, yeah. Giga Ram. And Fox Core 93. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. Yeah. Have fun with the game. Uh, yeah. In the coming days, we'll contact you via email. Uh, Make sure uh, you get the code yeah. and how to activate it, of course, instructions. Everything is included. But yeah, have fun playing that game. Good stuff, guys. Keep uh, registra uh, registrating because there's still more to come. Yep. Don't worry if you haven't won yet. And uh, yeah, good luck, guys. All right. Back to the build. Yes. Um, so I've already thought what I'm going to do next. I think it's better that I uh, first connect the cooler. Um, uh, the reason I was doubting it is because sometimes it can be easier to put the cooler into the case first uh, because once you start, you know, you've already connected this to the motherboard, that's it. You're going to have to handle, you know, both the cooler and the motherboard at the same time. So it can be a bit uh, of a hassle, but it's going to be a hassle no matter what. Uh, also, this gives me the opportunity to show that uh, usually in the box you've got two sets of mounting brackets with uh, coolers like this, uh, but pretty much any cooler, unless it's otherwise... Uh, stipulated on the box that it's only compatible with one or two types of uh, sockets but in this case we have a uh, bracket for both am4 or mounting parts basically for uh, am4 which is what i've got here and they've never been used they're even still in the in the plastic labeled am4 so they'll usually be labeled as well to help you out uh, and just in case the intel got picked and to show you guys it's not really rigged uh, I've also got, uh, maybe we can, I can use the phone for this again, mm -hmm. if it's still working. Getting Let's used see. to it already? Yeah, kind of, kind of. Um, I still had the, uh, this is the Intel uh, bracket. And the uh, back part, which is uh, the, the back bracket on the rear of the uh, motherboard. Uh, and the screw sets and standoffs and stuff like that. I think some of these I might need later on as well, because um, I'm going to use this. Uh, but yeah, now this is the part for the AMD uh, bracket and of course the little bag labeled am4 with the standoffs here um, but it's very easy to check as well because if you were accidentally i mean i think this one came on the product itself uh, which is basically on the header here on the pump header um, so you can swap these out by uh, yeah i think this is again a two-hand thing but uh, if you're doubting beforehand you can basically by twisting this and then pulling it off and if you're not sure what's going to fit, I mean, you can see these four holes here, which are basically uh, the, the uh, what is it, the back brace on the back of the motherboard that will help to uh, provide mounting pressure. So if you're not sure, you can always just hold this thing over these holes and see if they align. So in this case, as you can see, definitely not. So this is the wrong. Uh, the wrong thing to have the wrong bracket which is again that's i already knew that so i had them already uh, aligned so this one should be correct again very easy just put them over the holes like so and there you can see i mean it's, it's always a bit of finicky work and then you'll have to uh, you know do some some stuff to make them align properly but roughly yep this looks about right so this should be the right bracket that we use all right I think we can switch okay. to uh, the There's, normal cam again. Uh, got some people asking about the stream. Uh, yes, yeah. indeed, this is live live. So yes. that's why we're also interacting with the chat. Uh, we are live on many platforms. So, uh, you know, we have Periscope, we have Facebook, we have Twitch, uh, we have uh, YouTube. So uh, for the best experience, we also uh, recommend to just go to YouTube. And yes. we are also uh, live every Wednesday. You can use GoPro. I like that. We actually were thinking about that to see if we can like fit a helmet or something that you guys can just see first person what I'm seeing. But uh, yeah. unfortunately, we don't have that yet. Would look funny as hell, yeah. though. Um, it would also mean that everybody's going to see how messy the entire room is. Eh, you know, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Yep. <laughs> Um, anyway, so I'm just going to fit this thing on the uh, pump unit um, and that should be quite easy. Um, let me see. Oh, I'm doing it wrong. I think. Yep, that should be it. But you can pretty much, you, know, you can always take it off again and then realign it. Uh, the way you do that again is just, you know, uh, rotating it a bit to get it loose. Then you can very easily uh, take it out, realign it like this, and then again, rotate it, and then it's it's fixed into place. That's it. There's nothing uh, 
nothing that mystical about it. Uh, but I think, again, what you have to do here is there's a lot of pre-planning and thinking involved in this. Because you have to already think, how am I going to put this thing? So I think this should be okay, because I'm going to have the tubes facing up. So the tubes are okay to exit from this side of the board, which means I'm, I'm going to mount it like this. So that should be fine. Uh, I just hope the display is then is, is not upside down or something. I'm not sure uh, if you can change that later on. This, by the way, this cover is uh, magnetically held into place. So uh, just by pulling this off, uh, it, I didn't break it. You can very easily then put it back on like this. It's like a protective cover. Yeah, definitely more convenient than when you have to use screws. Yes, yeah, yeah. And for now, uh, I can take it off because that makes it a little bit easier to handle uh, this unit. Um, in terms of... Um, I think also one of the things that a lot of people are always discussing about applying thermal paste. How much? Which pattern is best? And everything like that. Which which thermal paste? And should we use liquid metal and stuff like that? Um, I'm just going to show you the basic, and um, I'm going to see if I can do this with one hand. But basically, you have this like little syringe. Um, maybe we can go to the close up cam again. So you have this little syringe. Once you take the cap off, it's. Uh, eh, let's see if it will focus on this thing. But yeah, it's very small. Um, one thermal paste can be a bit more runny than the other, so be careful when starting to uh, uh, apply pressure to the to the little syringe, because it, it you know you could squeeze out a lot uh, very quickly. And honestly, not that much is required. So what I like to do is just basically draw an X on the uh, on the chip. So uh, let's see, how do I, what is the right way up? Uh, I think like this. And what I'll do is I'll gently start squeezing just a little bit until, uh, as you can see, some is coming out. This may be already too much. And like this. And that's more than enough. So this is, I think probably, most people will say it's already too much. Probably it is. But yeah, this will then, once the cooler is applied uh, and it will push down on it, it will just basically squish down uh, and, and make the paste cover the whole uh, CPU. So that, that's more than enough. This is it. That's all you need. And then, of course, I'm going to quickly uh, cover this thing. Jack, can we go back to the main view again? Yeah, sorry, I don't want to... <laughs> I put the camera down again. Let's see. I, 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 a lot of people will probably catch up thermal paste. Yeah, we'll probably have something to say about this, yeah. but... <laughs> what is the name of this paste? In this case, it's uh, Arctic Silver 5, which again, is, I think is a, a fairly commonly well-known and, and much used uh, thermal paste. Good reputation. It, it just it works quite well. Uh, and then what I'm going to do now is um, I should probably <laughs> I should probably put the, uh, the standoffs on first, although I'm not 100% sure on this. So give me a moment. Uh, yeah, I think this, uh, yes. So I have these little things on here. Normally there will be a guide inside the box, which I actually don't have here because I just, you know, I took the products from several PCs and builds and, and live streams we did before. So I am kind of missing the all important instructions, uh, but I do have some experience, which should hopefully help me. But yeah, uh, what I'm going to do now is just put these, uh, yeah, I, I think this is good to show in the close-up cam maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> So as you can see, I'm putting these uh, little standoffs on here. Uh, they look like this. So they have like a little screw, uh, what is it? Thread on the bottom here. And then there's like something covering it and then uh, another thread at the top, which in the end, uh, the cooler will go over. And then we will use these things to fix it in place. So for now, I'm just gonna put these on here and this should provide a solid base for the cooler to be mounted on. 
Okay, you see there's a question and uh, interest in the uh, K360 all-in-one cooling. Yes. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, you can customize the uh, cooling block. You can put it into uh, RGB mode. You can uh, dif uh, display system information or you can go to photo mode where you can uh, upload some uh, pictures. Yep. So yes, you can uh, customize it. Okay, so I think uh, this is what I need to do before I can actually mount the cooler, the, the block, the cooling block on there. So that's what I'm going to do now. Again, this I think this requires two hands, but basically what I'm going to do is just align it and then put it down. Uh, and after that's complete, I will uh, use the thumb screws at the top, basically like this, um, to connect it after the, the block is in there. And basically this will fix it into place then. That's it. So let me just do that real quick. I think we can uh, switch to the main view again, Ja. Just in case you guys missed it, uh, for those who are wondering about the parts that have been chosen for today's build, you can uh, take a look at the left upper part in the screen. You can see all the components uh, that's going to be in the case, uh, including the case, because there are also some questions regarding what case we're going to use. It's uh, our uh, MPG Secure 500X, which is a big tower where you can fit a lot of components in. So if you yes. have a juicy, long and thick 3, uh, 3060, or I mean 3080, no worries. So I'm going to try and already arrange the cables in a way that um, they won't be... This is the most fun part. Oh <laughs> man, I hate this part. This is like, this is the part I hate with a passion. <clears throat> like, why are all these cables here? Completely unnecessary. It's not really unnecessary. You, you need them if you want to control the fans individually. But in this case, I'm just going for a, a quick setup of the PC, quick building. So, you know, I'm, I, I don't really want to control all the fans individually. But if you want to do that, that, you know, it will give you a lot more control, which is cool. So this once I fix the last one in place and I can then grab my screwdriver to give it just make sure that it's nice and tightly on there but once that's done that should mean that it's the mm -hmm. cooler is in place and the CPU in this case the Ryzen 9 5950X should be nice and cool once we start it up Oh. No one is saying nothing beats the front panel panel I.O. cables. Well, that's definitely a big contender for uh, what we have in front of us right oh, now. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 Indeed. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so what I can do now already as well, uh, I think this is a good time to also uh, connect some of the cables because obviously uh, some of these cables will need to be connected to the motherboard uh, to get their basically their orders of how fast they should spin and stuff like that, uh, but also RGB. So uh, let me just see, where is the, I think this is the one, yep. Mm, yep, so this is the, the, again, there will be, normally there will be a, uh, a whole guide included with the product which tells you which uh, header does what and where it needs to go. In this case, uh, I see one header that is connected to three, uh, which connects to the three fans here. So that's basically, it tells me that it's pretty much for the fan duty. Um, and that will be connected to uh, CPU yeah. fan. Yeah, and this is also a good way that it uh, came like oh. this uh, already in the box. So it will save you many uh, other spaces that you can use for other fans on your yep. motherboard in yep. case you know you run out of space. Exactly. And in case you were wondering uh, why I was saying it needs to be connected to CPU fan, uh, on, again on the motherboard there's a lot of markings, like in this case CPU fan 1. Uh, there's also pump fan if you have, for example, a uh, liquid cooler which requires you to uh, connect the pump directly to its own header. In this case, uh, it will be, I think, uh, already connected later on uh, to uh, other ones. So I don't think I have a separate uh, pump fan header. And uh, as you can see, some of these, these are the, the separate uh, cables in case you want to control each of these fans individually. So you have fan one, fan two, fan three. So you would need to uh, connect these to, well, different fan headers. So let's see, I mean, there are different ones here. There's a sys fan five. There's a, you, there's a lot of fan headers on motherboards these days. So 
you can you can probably fit more than than you think sys fan four two so yeah there's there's a lot of them i'm just gonna connect uh, the one header to control everything because again that's if, if you just want to get it working quickly that's all you have to do so then you just take this header here uh, get this out of the way and then uh, align this to the cpu fan gently connected i mean these pins are kind of fragile so don't don't bear down on them too uh too harshly uh, to, to with too much force shouldn't require much force anyway and also uh, it doesn't really snap into place so that also means that you know don't try and lift the motherboard up by a cable like this don't do that anyway but also not by the connector because yeah you're likely to just uh, pull it out uh, because it, it does come out come off quite easily usually so yeah, be careful with these things. But again, once you have it in your case um, and you don't touch it anymore, uh, this should not be an issue at all. Okay, let's see. So I have that one connected and then after that, I need still need to connect this one. Uh, this is a power connector, which in this case uses a, uh, well, I, I wanna call it the SATA power connector, which I call it that because the uh, uh, SSDs and hard drives, for example, tend to use a similarly shaped and also optical drives a similarly shaped uh, power connector. So I will need to connect that to my power supply unit once I've got that into my case. Uh, but for now, I think uh, that should be it for, for the motherboard for now. Um, I could potentially already connect some cables for the power supply as well, but I'm going to do that once I've got it into the case. So for now, I'm gonna create some space because again, I need to fit that friggin' big case on the table. So we need some space. Uh, let's see, let's get some of these other components out of the way. Uh, this one can already go back on. Oh, actually, no, we'll leave that for later. I'm just gonna move this onto the ground for now. And take the case. So the beauty of this case next to the sheer size of it is also the glass panels which don't just open very easily like this to grant you access to the insides but you can even just lift them out just as like that. easily as that hmm. and just put them to the side so they actually just you know they're completely gone out of your way uh, and then it's just as easy to put them back into place once you're done so both the front and the back as easy as that which then grants me very easy access to the internals of uh, the case. Uh, what I'm gonna do, we have a nice top mounted cam uh, and I do advise you guys to also do this to make it easier for yourself. It's usually just to gently put the case uh, on its back side once you start putting the motherboard in because then you can just let you know gravity do its thing uh, and it's easier to keep the motherboard in place. Whereas if you have it standing up, you're gonna have to you know, keep pressure on the motherboard while you're gonna fix the screws later on. So this is quite easy to do it. Just get these fan connectors out of the way for now. We'll need them later, but for now, I just don't want them to get into the way. So I've got my case here. Now I'm gonna grab my motherboard and cooler because again, I've already got them connected and attached. Yeah. And I need to watch out that these cables don't get tangled up too much. Watch out, watch out, watch out. <laughs> yeah, uh, see this is, oh man. Again, this is, some of the, this is one of these things that I, I just don't like <laughs> doing. Um, but yeah, there are a couple of standoffs in the case, um, which basically align with some of the, the, the holes in the motherboard. So you wanna gently align them. Again, there's no pressure involved here. All you have to do is just uh, make sure that they are aligned and uh, basically the motherboard is resting on it. Also, this is the time where if you don't have a pre-installed IO shield, this is the time that you wanna put it into the case and you wanna push it into the, uh, into the, the rear of the case where it will be. If you forget about that and you already put your motherboard in and you screw it in place and then you, you yeah. go and do the rest, you're gonna have a moment where you just think, "Ah, oh, crap! I forgot something." That because, really brings back memories. Yes, it will. It will then be, uh, you know, a, a, an open 
hole basically with some connector sticking out, which it, it will work, that's fine, uh, but it doesn't look pretty. So a lot of our motherboards these days have pre-applied uh, and pre-installed IO shields already. So it's, yeah, basically it's almost impossible to forget. But yeah, this is the time where you wanna make sure that that is also already there. All right. So we're now just gonna make sure that that aligns with the hole at the rear and then the other holes uh, are aligned with the, or sorry, the other standoffs are aligned with the holes in the motherboard. And of course there are a bunch of cables in the way. <laughs> but yeah, I can maybe quickly show you guys what I mean by, uh, you know, aligning the holes. Ja, if you want to switch to the, yeah. So as you can see here, for example, if I lift the board up very gently, you will see that there is a, like a standoff there. And if you just put it, put the board into place like this, and as you can see, it will align. It's, it's not a, a fixed fit. Um, some of them will, will kind of click into place. Some of them, it, the board will just lie on top of it. But then you have a bunch of screws that you get with the motherboard. Uh, I've actually got them laying around here. Um, these are screws like this, and I think you need about how many is there? Like I think maybe nine or something. Um, but yeah, and you just fix them one by one. Again, these are just Phillips screw screwdriver is what they require, and basically you just put them into uh, on on yeah you align them with the motherboard the hole and put them in there. Grab your screwdriver. Where is my screwdriver? Here it is like this. This one is actually really easy and accessible. Some of these um, might be a bit harder to reach. For example, uh, I mean, there's one right there. Uh, there's one there. Uh, one there. There's actually one I think I saw underneath one of the heat sinks here, which in this case we can't reach. I mean, it's okay. You don't have to uh, put all of them in there, but uh, I usually do just to be sure. Um, there's one was one hiding underneath the cable there, and of course at the bottom there should also be three. So there's one there, one there, and one there. So I'm just going to quickly uh, screw those in place. So this will help the board, of course, stay in place during transport or basically during the lifetime that you're using it. So you do want to fix it in place. And I've dropped one of the screws. Oh no! So it starts. Eh. It's always the same case, a screw falls and it just feels like it went into a black hole and it just never yeah, comes back. Yeah, the floor is also dark, so it's quite <laughs> hard to see it. <laughs> yes. Okay, anyway, let's, uh, let's continue with the screws that we do have. Bring on the puns, don't screw up. Ha 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 Exactly. Uh, but yeah, a uh, magnetic screwdriver is kind of a must to have here because as you can see it's really nice to have, you know, you just put the screw onto the tip of the screwdriver and then you can maneuver it into place. If you have to also maneuver the screw into place separately, some of these places where you have to put the screw are quite tight so it might be difficult to reach if you've got, uh, you know, normal sized hands and fingers. So having a magnetic screwdriver set is definitely a godsend in, uh, in this case. And again, these don't have to be fixed, you know, like you don't have to turn them all the way that you think nobody's ever going to undo these ever again, because uh, that might actually uh, be too tight. So just make sure that it's in there nice and tight, that it doesn't move, it doesn't rattle. Um, if they're fixed in place, that's fine. And then I'm gonna ask Ja to do maybe one more giveaway. And while he's doing that, I'll see if I can locate that last screw to undo my screw up. <laughs> Go on Ja, take it away. I see what you did there. Yeah. <coughs> oh, I found it. Okay, yeah. cancel the giveaway. No? Well, all right. <laughs> there goes the giveaway, guys. <laughs> all right. No. Okay, guys. Seems like we're going to get some more people happy. So, 
I'm about to draw new winners, so you still have like about a minute or two to uh, join the giveaway if you just joined. So yes. uh, make sure to go to msi.com slash two slash insider. And there, perform as many actions, uh, or if you have a loyalty bonus, make sure to use them. And uh, the more actions you perform, the more chances you have at winning. Yes. I'm going to draw them now. And we have... Boom, 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 boom. Let's see. Yes, we have the first one for this round. Forza, Forza Ego. Forza Ego, congratulations with uh, Watch Dogs Legion. Hope you have a lot of fun with it. And the second one is uh, real with capital A and capital, well, just capital A. <laughs> or is it supposed to be real? Real, I don't know. Yeah, congratulations uh, to you both. Yes. Uh, if you just joined, uh, we will contact you in the coming days uh, to give you the instruction how to redeem the code. So, uh, yeah, just uh, make sure to check your email and... Uh, yeah, congratulations once again and to the rest of you guys. We might have more in the store. So uh, <laughs> you can still participate if you just joined. And if you didn't win, don't worry. There's more to come. Yes. All right. So, so uh, back, to the, there? Back, back to the cables. Well, I, I tried to you know, stop myself from, from you know, doing stuff while you guys weren't watching because I, I kind of wanted you guys to, to see the full process. So now there's a lot of cables in here with a lot of connectors uh, that will have to go onto the motherboard. Uh, I mean, the motherboard is now fixed in place. That's not going anywhere. Uh, but you know, you've got things like uh, the, the front panel connectors, uh, the, 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 the power button, the reset button. Uh, uh, there is uh, the, the HDD light, uh, basically, that, which bl flickers to show you that uh, when, when the storage is actually engaged or doing something. Uh, those are really tiny, small connectors, which um, probably I'm going to, it's best to, to grab the, the close-up cam again. Yes. So. These little things here, um, and there's a, a set pattern that these have to be connected to. Um, I think. Let me let me just check to be sure if I'm not saying something stupid. <laughs> uh, I thought that it was JFP one. So I think I think it's this one. These ones, I have to say, these little pins. But yeah, this is again one of those things where if you don't know it. It's very easy to get overwhelmed because look at how many friggin' pins are on there. They're like the USB. Okay, so these are labeled USB. Obviously, that's not it. Uh, there are some here. But what about these things? No? PCIe 5, J JTPM1. No, if you, if you don't know what that means, it's, it's overwhelming. Um, but yeah, there is uh, usually a little, I'm just looking for it, see if I can find it, uh, a little overview. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Damn, that's, that's So usually tricky. if you uh, don't know anything about this, there's like a little help yes. printed on the board somewhere. There and you go. If in the worst case scenario, we just have to go through the box yeah. and the instruction manual. But here, Peter just found it. Yeah. At least I think this is it. <coughs> now that's just for the USB. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, but it looks like that. Else. So I'm, I'm actually looking for the thing that, that tells me where that, you know, for the front pin connectors and stuff like that. Because uh, it, it's usually, it should be near the thing where it actually uh, connects to. But for the life of me, I can't find it. So I might have to, you know, there's no shame in Googling stuff like this. At least I always say that because I've learned most of what I know. And if I come into situations where I think, all right, how do I do this? Or I, I don't know how to do, I just Google it. And then usually, you know, you, you'll get the information you need because to be fair, I don't, I don't see it anywhere on this board. Did you, Some, uh, did you see the JFP somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's for the front panel. I know JFP one, but I was looking for like there's usually markings there which show me uh, which right, for the power audio. Yes, uh, which connector needs uh, to go where, and right now, um, I don't see it, and I don't know off the top of my head. So I was gonna show like. Oh, it's really handy that we put these things on the motherboard, you know, that show you how, you know, where to do, where to put which connector. But uh, yeah, this is actually not a good example. <laughs> 
So, yeah, um, guys, if you want to help me with this, uh, feel free. Again, I don't know this off the top of my head. I know people like Eric and, and Mike, they know this. Uh, they, they, uh, they know this by heart. Well, uh, I think if, if we... We can, we can go to the main this, view again, uh, by the way, John. There's yeah. like a row one and a row two. And row one is generally for HDD and reset. A row two is for power LED and power switch. I don't even have all the connectors here, by the way. So I need to check which ones I'm missing. Is this, I've got power switch and power LED. So indeed I'm missing reset and I'm missing HDD uh, power or HDD LED, I think. So let me quickly check where I've got those. So usually they will be hanging out somewhere in the back of the case if you're missing any of these things. <laughs> ah, HD audio is also hanging out back here. I'm gonna need that one to come through. Uh, yeah. So HD audio is the connector you connect for the uh, uh, audio on the front panel. So basically, this is why I hate cables, because there's always some of them, you know, in limbo somewhere hanging where they're not supposed to be hanging. And then you end up, you know, having to spend a lot of time trying to figure out where they are. Uh, hmm. So, Tudor, it's the uh, Secura uh, 500X. That's the case. Yes. Uh, let's see, There's more people in the chat. <clears throat> so what um, I usually do is whenever I see a cable that I think, oh, I know where that's supposed to go, I'll just uh, connect it. So I've, I've just found the HD audio hanging out at the back there and it's supposed to be at the front or the, on the inside at least. So I will try to find out, oh damn, it has to go a little bit further than I actually put it. Uh, let's see if I can help it out here. Here we go. Yeah. So again, there's like usually a, a whole guide of uh, on, on the motherboard uh, box of where each connector should go. Uh, equally with the, the case for because of course every case has different front panel connectors. So every case will. Uh, tell you exactly which connectors you should connect for each uh, functionality. But the ones about, uh, you know, the power connector and stuff like that, those are very universal. Every case has that because obviously otherwise you wouldn't be able to use your power button, which is a problem if you don't have it. But yeah, this is also quite interesting because again, I don't see the cables for the reset button so i might have to undo all the cables at the back to try and find out because they might have be gotten caught in in there somewhere let's see so this case does come with these nice cable ties already on the case which usually makes it easy to do cable management but it can also be really easy to probably snatch up some cables that you shouldn't. I think that might be what happened here. But let me just check to be sure. The lighting RGB cable here. Da, da, da. There's the power switch. So. I am trying to figure out this is RGB. These connectors I just pulled to the inside because I don't need these. These are the fan headers for uh, individual fan control of the cooler. Where did these things go? Or might they be hiding here somewhere in this part? See, this is why I hate cables. I hate, this is the part I hate most. The rest isn't that bad, but all the cables, all the cables. 
I mean, if the that the, the, the one single cable, if it's not that important, we can leave it for now because uh, it's like a big ass tree of the cables, and uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to get through. I know, but uh, yeah, there's supposed to be more cables here. I mean, we, we, the power button is here and the uh, power LED, so I guess those are most important. But usually, okay. you have eight little tiny thingamajiggies there, little connectors. So I, I guess we can get by with just these here, but that's not how it's supposed to be. And I'm really wondering where the hell those other ones went. Like this, this little piggy went to market, and this little piggy went, well, we don't know. <laughs> but it's, well, it's... <clears throat> well, it could be the case, you know, the case has been laying around for quite some time now. Yeah, and, that's uh, true. You know, maybe uh, somebody, uh, you know, um, broke the cable, took it out. I think it's maybe somewhere stuck in the front panel. Yeah, but yeah. could also be the case. You never know what happened to it. Yeah. All right. Anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm still going to need to see a uh, schedule or somewhere, like a, an overview of where to put these, uh, the power uh, switch and power LED plus and minus. Well, it's, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, we all have some... The seven segment display that shows the BIOS postcode. Yeah, yeah, I know. So they are here indeed. And I know the uh, it's, it's below the postcode uh, thing. But usually there's like a little, um, how do you call it? A little overview of where which connector should go exactly. Yeah, I think in this case, uh, we, we <laughs> it's just printed in the instruction manual. Probably it is, yeah. But as luck would have it, I yeah. don't have it here. So but, uh, I, do have, I, I do have Google, so. I'll see if I can Google it. Well, generally, I think you can uh, go to row one, that's for HCD and uh, reset, and row two with four pins, it's going to be for power LED and power switch. Yeah, it's usually, it will be the same. So let me see, one, two, okay, so power so LED plus okay. minus, that's like, it's the top row, all right. And then the power switch is, should be right next to that. Okay, so it's basically the top row. Okay. Yeah, you know, guys, this, this is you know one of those a small kind of thing that usually you know everybody just reads off the menu as to you know where which pin needs to go in that specific uh, JFP connectors panel. Yep. But uh, you know sometimes uh, nice. it's, it's printed on the yep. uh, instruction manual and sometimes it's printed on the board. Yep. Uh, you know it just depends on you know where you can find it. There you just have to read it off. In this case, we're giving you a live demonstration of how to find it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and even if you can't find it indeed on the board, I think these are quite universal. So it, it's not that each brand or each motherboard has a different placement of these connectors. I think pretty much every brand does them the same way. Um, okay. So I've connected the most important ones, the ones for the power switch and uh, the ones for, um, <laughs> damn, this, this and the ones for the power uh, LED. So basically to indicate that it's actually working, uh, stuff like that. Now I'm just going to connect the other things like the front USB. That, those connectors are a lot easier because they're quite, yeah, they're, they're not that small. Uh, they do have a lot of pins though, so you do need to be careful about it. But these can require a bit more force to, uh, to actually get in there. And I think this one... So here's where normally you also already want to think about you know, cable management and how you can most effectively uh, put these cables so that they don't get in the way. But right now, because I just saw the time as well, I'm just going to go for the quick and dirty version. So excuse my cable management dear people. Uh, it's, it's not going to be pretty, but let's hope we get it to work before the end of the stream. All right, so I just had to get one connector out through the back here because the connector is all the way at the bottom of the motherboard. So I'll have to route it through the bottom of the case here. Here we go. Yeah, we need to work on a better camera setup as well, so things like this are actually a bit easier to see. Uh, here we go. That's this connector. 
which should go here. And there we go. And let's see. That's the power connector for the CPU cooler. This is for the RGB of the CPU cooler. So I'll have to route that into the back. All right, so now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to uh, put the radiator into place. Now this case actually comes with a uh, quite handy, uh, what is this? Uh, quite handy, um, a uh, little rack at the top basically that you can mount it to. Most cases you'll just have to find the right places to mount it to. In this case it actually has a part that comes out like a tray. Oh, and there goes another screw. And as you can see it slides out like this. So you can actually just uh, mount the radiator to this. Um, however it is recommended that, let's see how much space do I have here. I don't think that the fans fit in between that. Again, this is where you really have to pay attention where you mount everything. Because in this case, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to uh, remove each of the fans and mount them on top, basically in here. So I'm gonna have to remove the top panel, mount the fans individually at the top, and then uh, put the radiator basically uh, in this part here. Because if I were to just install this like this, uh, especially when it connects to this, so that means it's already coming down quite a bit. I don't think it'll fit. I mean, again, you can you can check it by doing like this. Actually, no, I think that might actually work. So we might not have to do that, although I think I should flip the radiator because the, um, the tubing might get in the way. No, actually, I don't think I can because the tube is not, I don't think they are long enough. So if I flip this, it's gonna be a problem. All right, again, cables, love them. Cables and tubing, guys, cables and tubing. Great spirit in the chat, everybody's uh. trying to help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, I'm just gonna mount it like this. Uh, in some cases, you can, uh, you can get in trouble with the, um, uh, the heat sinks on the motherboard but in this case i think it should be okay um, so yeah i'm just going to mount the radiator to this bracket like so i guess if you guys see it from the top so like this and that should be okay uh, so what i need then are the screws I'm not going to fix all the screws in the place. Normally I would say fix all the screws, but in, turn, in, in, um, in the interest of time, I'm just going to put a couple of them in there so that at least it's secure. But yeah, normally I would advise you to use most of the screws to fix it in place on, uh, on pretty much all the points. This can also help uh, prevent vibration or you know, unwanted noises. In this case, I'm just going to do like the outer four. That should be fine for now. And by the way, appreciate the help, guys. Thank you. Again, I wasn't lying when I said um, I don't do this every day. In fact, I might be the person in our team who has built maybe the, f well, maybe not the fewest number of PCs, but at least recently. I mean, <clears throat> I mean that's okay, right? Yeah. Because uh, well, you learn by doing. Yeah. But also, you know, uh, the, the, the connector stuff, it's, it's something that usually any, like anybody who builds a PC just try to find like where is the print. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you don't find the print. Nope. Sometimes there's just no print. All right, and again, whilst, when sliding this in, you really have to be careful not to snag any cables or, you know, trap anything in, in a place where it can get damaged. In this case, because the case is so um, big and it offers such a huge amount of space, it's actually, you know, relatively easy. And if I, if you take a bit more time after this stream, for example, I could probably quite easily do an, a bit of a, you know, a tidy job in terms of cable management. 
but I'm, in this case, I'm not really going to bother. So this should hold this thing in place. There we go. And now the last thing I'm wondering is where this thing should go. Huh. Oh, this I think is a USB. Yep, this should be connected to the USB on the inside here. See, this is where it can get messy and sometimes a bit, well, I don't want to say messy, but you know, there's, there's so many cables that there's really, uh, there's only so, so many ways you can um, make a clean build, let's say, you know, like hiding the cables. So I'm just trying to see where I can actually lead this thing that it's the least visible and also not getting in the way of, for example, a, a graphics card, which will sit in the end there. Um, but it will have to go all the way to down here. I can probably route it through here. There we go. So this connects to an internal USB header. Well, Pavlovsky, uh, we can really install both graphics cards uh, because first of all, they are uh, different cards from different uh, manufacturers, so from AMD and from uh, NVIDIA. So even though uh, there are enough slots, you gotta be uh, really careful with you know, what kind of cards you're gonna put in the slot at the same time. In this, uh, in this case, they are not compatible. So uh, if they are compatible, you gotta make sure that yeah. uh, you gotta make use of Crossfire or uh, SLI, but be very careful because nowadays with gaming, you don't really get the scalability uh, out of you know, the, the the input for those two uh, graphics cards. Yeah. One of the things you also want to do is make sure, of course, there usually in a case you have several fans. This one has two massive ones on the front, and it, it also had two at the at the top, which I removed because I wanted the uh, airflow to move freely the fans at the top would blow the airflow inwards whereas these fans are trying to blow the air through the radiator outside of the case so i didn't want to stop that of course so that's why i took the two big radi uh, big fans that were here out um, but yeah so the case fans and there's one at the rear here so you want to make sure that all of them are also connected to the motherboard otherwise uh, yeah they, they don't spin they don't get any instructions so um, each of them needs to be connected to the motherboard, which again requires a bit of uh, finding the cables and then connecting them one by one. It's already looking better at the cable management than 10 minutes ago. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing about cable management, right? I mean, the more you, you do it, and maybe it would have been a smart idea for me to connect yeah. these cables before yeah. I mounted this. I personally, I'm not sure about you guys, you know, when, when I build a PC, you know, when there's like so many cables in the way, that feeling of, you know, tucking them one, away, one by one away and, and yep. starting to look more clean and clean, that feeling is yep. really wonderful. And I think the more you do this, and especially the more you're familiar you get with, with all the different uh, components and uh, different cases and how to do proper cable management in them, I, I think it will get easier. But for me, Again, it's, it's like I, I enjoy PCs and I enjoy tinkering with them to a degree. But there are also some parts of it like cable management that I just I, I don't really care for it. You know, it's, it's, it's nice if it looks good, of course, and if it works. But up to a point, I don't really it, it's not really my thing. I don't get really I don't get a, I don't get a big kick out of it or anything. To eat his own taste. Oh, that's the thing, right? That's why I do graphics cards and uh, peripherals, usually. Well, guys, can you imagine Peter's own gaming PC at home? Oh, I'll man, don't. Look from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually not that bad, you know, because, again, you just, you know, you, you spend the time once, and if you, if you have the time to do it, you know, this is a live stream, so we kind of have to keep into, take into account that we have to finish within a certain time as well, which is already maybe unlikely. But well, wouldn't be the first time. No, I know, I know. But still, you know, you want to try. Uh, so I've got, let's see, I think I should have most of these fans connected, but I'm missing one or two fan headers. So let me just quickly check. Yeah, I moved one there out of. <gasps> oh, see, I made a mistake, guys. Uh, I actually, I moved one of the fan headers out of the way. 
and I, I pushed it out of the hole for the um, I.O. shield, but then of course I put it back into place uh, without taking into account that the cables were sticking out on that side. So what I'm going to do now is gently um, see if I can uh, undo the screws of the motherboard one by one so I can just move it out of the way ever so slightly and move the cables back in. Yeah, to you guys too, you know, when you build a PC and sometimes you want to, you know, just simply put something away for later, yeah. you got to make sure that, you know, don't forget about it. Yeah, or at least, yeah, don't uh, forget they were stuff there. in here, guys. Okay, so this screwdriver is magnetic, but not that magnetic. So I can't seem to reliably take these screws out. Which kind of sucks. Yes, maybe for the next one we will uh, maybe do the cable management more. I've done builds before where I did, you know, part of the cable management or I had some things already pre-installed to, to, you know, in the interest of saving time. But in this uh, live stream, I, I uh, consciously chose to, uh, I, I wanted to show you guys like the, the unedited version kind of, you know, like A to Z, what do you have to do short of taking it out of the packaging. Um, so yeah, and then you, you do have a bit more risk of running into things like this, which are, you know, again, it's not a big issue, it's just time consuming. Uh, this, this, this is quite easy to correct but it takes a little bit of time so yeah and that's annoying well, when you have the chat seems to be enjoying it <laughs> you have a limited time well of course i mean this is like you know contrary to all the uh pre-edited stuff where everything goes perfect the first time and like everything looks easy sometimes it's just not you know sometimes it's just yeah. not that easy you know, we're the hardware guys, you know, we Ooh. give you the information, the technicals, but you know, building a PC live sometimes, yeah, if there are many cables, yeah, you can forget about a cable or two. Shit happens. And now I'm trying to lift a screw out of place. It's the last one as well. And it's just, again, this screwdriver is just not, just not magnetic enough. Oh, no wall, the Dragon plushy, plushy which is uh, lucky. That's his name. It's our mascot, and uh, unfortunately, we're not giving away the uh, <laughs> the it. lucky plushie. No, so I'm still I'm still in the in the in the line to get one. But maybe maybe if we notice that many many people are very interested, we can arrange something in the future live streams. Who knows? Maybe there will be a dedicated live stream just for lucky. Here we go. All right, that should do it. Now to get the connectors back in. <laughs> yes, great, great drinking game. Everyone, uh, everyone take a shot every time somebody says cable management. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Manage your cables, damn it. Okay, so, hope I've saved this. <laughs> Well, For Inferno, now. you are spitting some truth in the chat. Good Eric is not in the stream. He would just rush and wait till he can break it. Oh, maybe. <laughs> but then again, I've also given it my uh, my best try today to uh, to break it. Not like I didn't try. <laughs> All right, so time to put the screws back in. How much is your lucky plushie? Well, uh, it, there's you, no price you, on it. You can't put a price on it, indeed. At least? <laughs> no, 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 no. Cashew, no, I like that. At least it's not a Verge video. Yeah, that's true. Could be, could be worse, could be worse. <clears throat> yeah, you know, well, you know, I, we can be honest, no, they're, they're, we are making some human errors. We're, we're not spitting bullshit. Yeah. In a sense, in a sense. Indeed, we're trying to, to show you the basics and you know, but we are not immune to making mistakes ourselves and we don't pretend to be, so that's 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 one thing. Like Ja said, we're all human. Human after all. Yeah, you know, sometimes you, can, you forget about a cable. 
it happens. With a cable outside of your case, that happens. Yep, and especially if you got like, I actually, I wanted to use a, a different cooler, which was a bit simpler, but then again, this one was more fancy. And with a high-end CPU, you, you do want uh, really good cooling power. Uh, the, the, really the only downside I saw, well, there were two potential ones. One was the massive size of the 360 radiator, which again, can sometimes be a bit of a hassle to, to fit in a case. But you know, having found this case, that really wasn't an issue anymore. And then secondly, it was just the sheer amount of cables coming out of it where, you know, that just triggers me for some reason. But that's like a, an issue that I personally deal, have to deal with sometimes. That I'm just kind of like, when I see a lot of cables, I just think, oh, hell no. Not this again. <laughs> Damn you, cables. Yeah, but you know, the more I do it, probably the better I'll get at it. So, at least I hope so. And in the end, you know, it's... Uh, it may help some, somebody who also finds himself, him or herself, in a similar situation and thinks, oh no, what the hell did I do? Um, and then, you know, if they ever saw this part of the video, they can at least see, all right, that's not the end of the world. We can fix this. Don't worry. <laughs> we got some more people commenting on the first, but uh, I think we're just going to yeah. let that rest for now, guys. Come on, it's been enough, right? Yes. Well, to be fair, you know, we, we, also, we were also joking about it a bit because, you know. Yeah, it's just a tease. Yeah. You know, their intentions were good. It's just that they had some, you know, some inaccuracies in there, which, yeah, you kind of had to be called out. But that was a long time ago, guys. Oh, Merrick, you think too lowly of me. Even though I cut open a gaming chair, it doesn't mean I'm going to cut open uh, Lucky. So don't oh, worry about that. Oh, no, that's, that's asking too much right there. Maybe, maybe, maybe the way I get kick, uh, kick, kicked out of the office, I uh, might consider it. <laughs> but, uh, you know... No, nah, no, nah, no, nah. that's, that's, that's not possible. Exactly. So normally, uh, I mean, I'm going to skip the RGB for now. Uh, normally you'd have to, uh, you'd, you'd have an equal set of connectors just like the fan headers, but then there are RGB headers. Um, again, that would just take a lot of time and it's, it's for eye candy. I would love to do it, but I just don't think we have the time. So uh, I will just leave them out for now. So right now what we have here is a uh, motherboard that's fixed in place. I've got pretty much all the connectors that, you know, for the fans and stuff uh, connected, for the uh, cooler that's connected. I've got the M.2 in there, I've got the memory. Um, uh, the only thing really, uh, two big things basically missing. One is the power supply with all the connectors and the second one is the uh, graphics card. So uh, let's start with the power supply. That one will go but let's lift this thing up. We'll go under here. So if you've ever saw the rear end of a case, you will notice that under here usually is a, a block like this where you have to uh, put a power plug and there's a button in there with an I and an O. The O means off basically and the I means there is power or it's, uh, yeah, it's on. Um, let's see, there are also some screws usually delivered with the, let me get this right, either with the case, but I think with the case usually, yeah, uh, or with the uh, power supply itself, but I think with the case, to fix the uh, power supply in place. It's also usually a good idea to already check before you put the power supply in the case, uh, which of the cables, which of the connectors. This is a modular power supply, by the way, so you'll notice there's no cables connected to it yet. There are also sometimes power supplies where the cables are already connected there and you cannot switch them out. Um, and you have a combination between those two, semi-modular. Semi this is a fully modular one, so I can, uh, I have to select the right cables, in this case for the motherboard, uh, CPU and uh, the VGA, and also one for um, SATA or peripheral, basically because we need that for the uh, power of the liquid cooler. So I have some cables here. Also a word of advice here. Um, I, I was told, and I'm pretty sure this is accurate, uh, you can't just use any uh, cable of, uh, for example, if you had an old modular power supply from a different brand and you buy a new one, um, it, it's usually not a good idea to just use old cables of a different brand with a new power supply or a different brand. So just stick to the, uh, the cables that you get with uh, a power supply to avoid any potential issues. So uh, right now, again, I'm just going to prepare the power supply by connecting the cables I will need, which starting with the 
24 pin for the motherboard which is that that big row of connectors and connect them on the power supply itself here we go I will of course need uh, at minimum one for the CPU uh, usually these cables are also uh, tagged or yeah how do you say labeled yeah so I can I don't know if this thing is still running but if it is uh, da, da, da. it's running just fine yeah yeah, yeah I, I wasn't seeing what I'm actually filming oh here we go so as you can see here there's uh, it says CPU um, this one actually uh, connects on the motherboard itself I believe and this uh, the the other end is what you connect on the power supply uh, different cables will have different uh, let's see different markings so this one for example says PCIe so this one can be used for the graphics card for example and it's divided up into six pin or eight pin if you use these two um, so yeah and then the, of course there is uh, this was the SATA or peripheral connector I was talking about which I will need for the liquid cooler um, so yeah let's uh, let's get cracking on that So this one was PCIe, so that's graphics card VGA, here we go. Uh, and we will need multiple of those. Uh, this was, yeah, this is also PCIe. Yeah, we need three 8 pins. So that means we need two cables in here. And then we've got the CPU. I mean, usually you need uh, both cables, but in, uh, well, you don't need, um, but it's recommended to use, to connect both cables for the CPU. But in most cases, especially if you're not going to overclock, which in this case we are not going to do, um, having, connecting one of the eight pin connectors is fine uh, and should work just, just fine for now. All right, so this is my power supply with the cables connected that uh, I will need. Uh, actually, no, I'm missing one. That is the peripheral one, the SATA connector. So let me also make sure I connect that one before I forget. Let me just connect that one here. Here we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install that into the bottom of the case here. Um, and what I will do to make my life a bit easier is I will rotate this thing. Um, no, actually, I'm just going to gently put it on its side, on the other side. So now you will see the rear facing upwards. Here we go. So this is the space for the power supply here. This is the rear of the case. So Are you ready for more cables, guys? Yeah. <coughs> it's more cables time. So as you can see, there is well, there's plenty of space, basically. By the way, there is an opening on one side of this uh, uh, power supply with a fan inside. Make sure that side is uh, facing, in this case, down, where the, the case is actually not closed on the bottom side. There is also like a vent, so it can actually get air there, because that's, that's what it's for. Don't put this uh, onto a solid surface because your power supply can get really hot. So if it's a closed surface, it's usually not good. So let me see if I can get this thing in. It's got all the cables here. Yeah, here we go. All right. And I just need to put it in place. Grab my screws and make sure we keep it in place. So this would actually be easier if I'm holding it, uh, or sorry, if I put it upright. But for the purpose of the stream, uh, it's a bit easier so you guys can actually look in uh, on the side. So this, this gives you, I hope, at least a better view. Um, and it's, it's, it's doable this way, but it's easier if you just put the case upright. So again, gravity kind of already puts the um, power supply in the correct position. All right. 
Let me just align this correctly. Come on. Wait. Did I? Did I? Oh. Did I, for some reason, grab the wrong screws here? I don't think so. They should be the right ones. <laughs> Again, you know, if you buy like a case and a power supply and everything like that, you're very likely to end up with a whole bunch of screws for different mountings and different things. So it can be a bit um, challenging to make sure you have the right screws for each of the components. and uh, I'm sure there are online stores somewhere uh, that can give you the uh, Lucky Plusy online but I can say for sure um, mm. where I don't think we sell sale. it separately ja? the uh, yeah. Lucky Plusy I don't think this is sold separately no yeah indeed I'm not sure uh, it could be the case I mean yeah you just have to look around if there's nothing around then uh, it's like Peter says it's uh, it's not just it's not sold separately uh, from Usually what I know, it's, it's uh, you know we, we give it away for free at events, for example, and sadly uh, it's been a while since we had any events, but um, that and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And sometimes there's like um, giveaways, like a combination packages with uh, some of our products where you know we get you get some goodies if you buy certain products. That's I think that's one of the only ways that I've at least known uh, that you can get a lucky doll or plushie all right so now i've got this thing installed here um, this is fixed in place i've got all the cables on this side and i need to get them of course on the other side because they need to be connected to the motherboard uh, the cpu connectors and in the end uh, the graphics card so uh, let's see each of them has a different length as well so that's sometimes a bit challenging In this case, that can even I can already see maybe some of them are going to get challenging. Some of them might be a bit short. I may have to swap one out for a longer one. So I miss. I think I misjudged that one. Actually, no, that that won't do me that much good. Anyway, we'll see how far we get. Uh, this one, the big 24 pin, is on the side of the motherboard. So I'm just gonna jam it through on the side here and then once we flip the car, uh, case over we will see where it uh, where it ends up but yeah usually this is also already the part where you kind of plan where you want to do each cable so basically there are these uh, straps here so you can pretty much you know tie all the cables together here but there's already quite a lot here so for now I'm just gonna keep them out of the way this is the CPU uh, connector so that one is at the top of the motherboard I'm gonna put that one through there so I'll need that one on that side and then these are uh, the VGA uh, or the PCIe connectors and this long one here is the peripheral one now this one I can already connect because I do believe I have the no this is for the oh I think here it is yeah this is for the liquid cooler, the, the 360K uh, series, to get its power as well. So just need to connect that one up. And then for the graphics card, you just want to push them through the side here. Um, because again, they will need to be at the rear end of the graphics card once it's uh, installed. So just push that one through. And I hope that the cable is long enough to actually reach it, especially this one. So this one seems rather short, but I don't know if I can put it in. Yeah, I might be able to put it a bit closer, so that might give us a little bit more space here. Uh, no, that was the wrong one. Hmm. I'm just gonna leave it in place for now, see how far we get but it does look a bit tiny bit short uh, 
Um, all right, let's see. So at this point, we will turn the case back over and we will have all the power cables coming out through the case We're actually into the front. Almost there. Almost. So turning it over again, uh, using the big 24 pin, of course, that's one of the first ones you, well, the order doesn't really matter as long as you don't power it on, of course, but you want to make sure you have this one connected. It's the big connector you can't really miss. And then there's a couple at the top of the motherboard, which I think it's, it's better if I just gently move the uh, radiator out of the way so I can easily access it, which is much easier if you have this tray. So you can just slide it out like this. And then here I have the uh, motherboard connector. Yeah, you guys, it's maybe hard to see, but I have the uh, CPU connector. And I will put that into CPU 1. They are marked. And I don't, I'm not sure if it matters exactly, CPU power 1 or 2. But my OCD says use 1. So I'm going to go, go with that. <laughs> That's usually, you know, if in doubt, just start with one. That's usually, you know, start that, with number one. That would, yeah, that will also be like the most logical choice. In, in guys, the, right? You know, in the event that there is indeed uh, a reason why they numbered it one and two, then you've probably got it right if you, if you choose number one. And if it doesn't matter, then it, it should still be not be a problem because then it doesn't matter. So one is, at least in my mind, is usually a good, uh, solid choice for this. Now I'm just going to fix the radiator in place again. Here we go. Oh, I just hope that you know missing a couple of oh, missing a couple of um, front front panel connectors isn't going to come back and bite me in the ass. Because I've never done that before. I've never like missed out on on some front panel pins before. That's that's never happened. So I don't know. It could be that it's no biggie. It's no big deal. It doesn't matter. Well, you, you can't use a reset button, and, and it's not going to show you you know storage activity. But other than that, uh, okay. So this should be all right. Um, then I've got the graphics card connectors here. Oh yeah, that's going to be. It might make the bend, but I'm just going to pull the thick ribbon cable for the 24 pin back a little bit so it doesn't get into the way too much. Let me see. Uh, that's actually hard to distinguish. <laughs> Which one is the... That's not the one. Uh, so actually, the 24 pin splits off into three smaller cables which are quite easy to mistake for uh, for the PCIe power cable for your graphics card so but yeah this one can be pushed out a bit and then you know that's the good thing about having a lot of space at the bottom of the case here you can really push the cables there if you need to uh, by the way, you can also put the uh, some of the hard drives here, uh, also again out of sight, so that's good. And with those things out of the way, I'm left with these uh, PCIe connectors, my NVIDIA graphics card, the RTX 3080, and of course we're going to mount that into the top slot. Um, I do have some connectors here, the fan connector and one of the RGB connectors that were just hanging around. So. I'm going to try and maneuver those out of the way as much as I can. Uh, usually that's not recommended to have it in between here. But I think that should be okay for now. Let me just check. You know what? Actually, I'm going to relocate this cable a bit, this uh, fan header. 
I'm just going to undo these. I think there might be like a fan hub at the back as well, which can connect all these fan headers at the same time. Uh, from one point at the back, which again would pretty much do a good job at hiding all the cables while still, you know, being able to connect all the fans. All right. <coughs> Ooh, bless you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, Arbeit, no. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to give away the PC once no. it's done. <laughs> no, we're going to have to actually uh, give yeah. back the components to the people who uh, use them to test them. Yeah, we uh, we don't uh, even own uh, most of the components, so uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just would have been a nice stunt. I mean, I'm just wondering why the hell. Is there something stuck? No, the, but there are actually. It's very. Uh, strange that actually two of the expansion slot uh, covers are, are off which you know is, is logical when you think about like all right uh, that's probably where the graphics card sits but maybe there's an extra uh, cover on the case panel no the side. but they the, the two covers that were removed are not the ones that you need to fit the graphics card into this slot uh, there's right the alignment <laughs> yeah there's there's you know it's 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 one exactly one slot off so it's weird anyway i'm just going to remove this one as well because then we can fit the graphics card in just align it with pcie slot and then gently once you've got it aligned press down this is one of the easier parts usually there we go and then Connect or connect the screw in the uh, the, sh the PCIe uh, oh, screw of the slot to secure it into place in that way as well. Again, the mag the magnetic force on this screwdriver is not so strong on this one. The force is not strong with this one. <laughs> Sorry to say. So. Usually, if you have a really good one that's uh, very, uh, you know, just doesn't let go of the components very easily, that, that makes your life so much easier. Because you can just dangle screws into place and then whoosh, that's it. All right. Uh, well, this should fix most of it. Now to see if we can actually make the power connector reach this thing. Wow, that's, that's a tight fit. Damn. Uh, I'm not sure if that will do. Maybe I can, usually they, we, we put them in from the top, but maybe if I route them in from below, that might actually be a better idea on this one. But that means I'm gonna have to pull out the PCIe power cables first. Let me just see if I have the right ones. Yes. And then push them through this one, which basically means they'll come into the case right below the graphics card. I'm not sure if this is going to do me any favors. Well, that might do, because it means that they also have to um, cover the, the width of the heatsink, let's say. While normally if you, if you let them come in through the top, all they have to do is basically just drop off um, from the back plate or the back of the GPU, which is not very thick. So it doesn't, uh, they don't have to travel very far. All right, let's try that again. Oh wait, there's a, the RGB power connector is hanging here. So yeah, ignore the RGB for a bit, guys. I uh, hope you guys can forgive me for that. And then I'm just gonna connect all these. PCIe power connectors, the eight pins to the RTX 3080. That's one. Um, actually, I might might be better if I do it this one first to make sure I have enough space. Because again, it's a, it's a tight fit. So some of these power cables sometimes are a bit longer than others and I only had the ones that came with these uh, this build which was used on an open test bench so there I mean the length of the cable really doesn't matter because it's all accessible and it's all very close together and it doesn't have to get you know pushed through any kind of holes in a case 
So I, I just got the cables that, that they were using <laughs> in the last stream. Um, all right, but I think with connecting that, it should pretty much be done. The only thing I'm worried about is the tubes may be a bit close to this fan, so that might start rattling if they hit it, but it doesn't look like it right now. But I just want to make sure that things are moved out of the way before I choose to actually turn it on. So let's see what happens. So either we get a spectacular fireball. <clears throat> I'm going to get myself some protection, uh, if you don't mind. I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, that's a lot of effort to put in. Yeah, Inferno appreciates it, uh, how hard you're trying. So much, so much efforts. Yeah, thanks. It's good to see. Uh, if you do not connect the RGB wire to the addressable RGB port, you will not get any RGB. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, you have to, uh, I mean, so basically if you have a fan, for example, which uh, of course it, it can turn so that you've got a fan header, but that's basically to tell the fan to spin and then how fast to spin if it's a PWM fan. Um, or, and then it usually, if it's an RGB fan, it will have a secondary header, which is just dedicated for the RGB. So if you don't connect both of them, I, then, I mean, you would hope you at least connect the header that tells the fan how to spin and that it has to spin, because then it will actually do something. But yeah, if you want the RGB, you'll have to connect that header as well. Okay, well, oof. Uh, what do you say, guys? Looks pretty slick. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna connect it up. Ja, if you want, you can do another giveaway in the meantime. <clears throat> all right, guys, time to rumble. So I Ooh. guess it's probably the last two giveaway that we have for today. I don't know. But uh, yeah, not sure, but let's go. The next winners are... <clears throat> Let's see what we have here. Uh, the first one is Troy. Congratulations, Troy. Hope you have a lot of fun with it. And the second one would be... Oh, that was a bit of a diff uh, difficult one. <laughs> Ara, Ara, Ara Given? Ara Given. Ever Given? Ara, the Ara, ship? Ara, Ara Given. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ara Given. I try my best. Arad, Congratulations. Ara Given. Yes. Hoping to uh, also have fun with the game. Uh, just like I said in the stream before, but in case you missed it, in the coming days we'll contact you via email. So keep a track. Uh, uh, yeah, keep track of your inbox. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Yes. All right, guys, so um, moment of truth. Uh, I'm just going to quickly get some screws out of the way. Um, I haven't installed Windows on this either yet. So basically, we hope to just post into the BIOS. Um, and let's see if that works. And if we then still have time, I can see if we can quickly put Windows on it. But uh, Which also shouldn't last too, or shouldn't take too long. Um, so. I hear sounds. Well, there is sound and there is light. Although, of course, I haven't uh, connected most of the RGB uh, light, so there's not that much light. There's just the light on, uh, let's see, the graphics card, of course. The screen no on smoke. the CPU cooler is uh, powering on. There's some LED on the motherboard itself. And let's see if we can get some post code going. Yep. Um, oh, wait, maybe I can show you guys this again <laughs> on the close up cam. Don't know if it's still working. Let's yeah. see. Oh, here we go. So we get um, basically, uh, yeah, it says it's a Ryzen 9 16 core processor. Uh, it's got some stuff there. Uh, the DRAM size is uh, 16 gigs, so that checks out. It's a dual channel. 
we've got uh, a, a keyboard mouse uh, done and it's uh, well it's not detecting any boot device yet so basically I have to press uh, F1 to run setup and that should take us into the BIOS here we go and as we can see the uh, CPU temperature 32 degrees so I mean let's just say the cooler is then also working correctly if it wasn't this would be already right now a hell of a lot higher so the CPU cooler is doing its job the liquid cooler uh, we've got here all the information about the motherboard itself and the BIOS version uh, again I, I flashed a, 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 one of the recent BIOS versions prior to this stream otherwise perhaps this sample uh, the motherboard would not recognize the processor and here we can also see uh, if we go to fan info uh, here we can see for example the uh, uh, the fan curve for the liquid cooler so basically uh, it's it's a pump unit but um, yeah we can there also customize the fan uh, curve basically so if we think it's uh, it's too loud or it, it ramps up too quickly you can basically just move it like this to say uh, you need to uh, I think let's see yeah at a certain temperature uh, it needs to spin at a certain uh, uh, let's see what is it oh yeah so the bottom row the bottom axis is the temperature as you see so this is the temperature so I can say look if you reach uh, 60 degrees here for example or one 140 Fahrenheit um, you need to and the left side is like uh, percentage wise of the fan duty so you need to be at uh, like I don't know 50% of the fan duty so like that and you can set four four reference points there uh, to your liking and then basically it will just yeah it will just remember that if you don't uh, you don't really have to save it uh, well, afterwards when you move out of the BIOS of course you have to save it um, and then if you want to install Windows on it what you need to do is you need to uh, create a uh, I've done it already uh, a little USB stick this is one I had lying around uh, a Windows media creation tool let's see and connect that here we go just a simple USB drive basically uh, connect that into the back end of the PCB. Uh, so here we go. It doesn't really matter which one. Any of them will do. There we go. And then we go back here and we basically tell the PC this is the, the boot order. Um, so I'm not sure which one it is. I think this one, the USB key, needs to be uh, moved to the left. Oh, did, not sure if you guys saw that, but it was here. So you, this is to, to uh, change the boot order you want it right now at least to boot from the USB disk so that or the USB uh, key so that it will uh, start to install Windows and after you've done that you can simply go to the top left or sorry top right uh, close and it will ask you hey do you want to save the configuration and exit and basically it will tell you of course any changes you made so in this case I made some changes to the fan profile and I changed the boot order so yes I want to save that change it will then Reboot. Do, do, do. By the way, this uh, this part, especially this this kind of thing when making changes in the BIOS and stuff, that can take a bit longer. So it doesn't really matter how fast your SSD is at this point. It doesn't really influence this part of the process. You just have to wait. It takes a while. Image will be coming back any second now and it should hopefully then uh, be booting off of the usb drive which means that it should be basically prompting us with a uh, windows installation menu or wizard but again these things sometimes can take a little while Indeed, gamer zone. Thanks, uh, Horace. Yeah, we have quite some fans uh, who really love the USB drive. <laughs> yeah, this was one of the things I uh, I also got like internally at an event some uh, some time ago. It was a gift, so um, yeah, I'm hanging yeah. on to it. It's not the fastest USB drive, but it's it's all right. It's <coughs> fine. Not sure if you guys uh -huh. uh, recollect or recall what the USB drive is referring to, you know, how it looks. This one. <laughs> yeah. Can you guys guess? 
It's been a while. Yep, it has. So unfortunately, there's no LED uh, light on the USB drive, so I can't really see if it's uh, doing anything. And unfortunately, the screen is staying black. Actually, it's off. Wait, let me see. Let me power it on again. It turned itself off. Now, that could be because it's, it, it didn't get a signal for, uh, for a while. So sometimes just turning the screen back on again, and it can sometimes get connection but right now it doesn't look like it so then you can try and manually select some uh, input modes but right now it's not letting me so i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to try and reboot the whole pc again um yeah this sometimes happens oh wait no nope. hdmi uh, no signal hmm so that was it that was the screen turning itself off uh all right um so then I'm just going to power down the PC by holding the button. Hopefully that doesn't uh, undo anything or doesn't screw up any of the process. And turn it on again. Because for some reason it didn't really go into the USB drive like I wanted it to. Do, do, do. Twin Frozer, yeah, you guys got it. That's right. Oh, here we go. I saw a BIOS screen, so that's already a bit more than we got just now. Sometimes it just requires an extra reboot. Ah! It's always the same old, same old, huh? Have you tried? Ah! <laughs> Peter getting sweaty, and I was already sweaty. Trust me. Uh, I was, uh, you know, when I was sweaty, I was sweaty when I got to the part where I had to uh, install and, and put the uh, radiator into the case, because I honestly thought I was probably going to have to. Uh, I'm just going to leave this uh, time and currency, blah, blah, blah whatever. Uh, we're not in the UK, uh, and I'm going to put definitely choose UK international for this. But yeah, um, I'm just going to install. But yeah, I was sweating because again, oh, I also don't have very, I don't really have a product key for now, so I'll just uh, move along. Yep. And this is again, it's just to, to to show you guys the full process of you know what what if I have a PC, I have the parts, and what if I just want to get it up and running? This is how you do it. Uh, custom install. I have no idea what what is on here uh, yet. Uh, let me see. I don't know. Delete. I'm just going to delete all the partitions for now, create a new one. Whatever whatever was on here is now officially lost. Um, new partition apply. Yes, it will create some new partitions. And then we say next. And it's just going to copy the files. Uh, it does not use a 1.4 display port cable. No, uh, right now, uh, to be honest, for me, in my experience, usually HDMI is a bit more reliable, especially if you're, uh, you know, prior to installing any drivers and you're just setting up your PC. Sometimes display port can be a bit finicky, I've found. So sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. Um, whereas HDMI is kind of a bit more consistent to my feeling. So that's why I'm, I've gone with uh, HDMI on this one. Windows 10 home. Yeah, guys, we're yeah, on budget. I just, I just clicked <laughs> one again. I, we, we kind of have to hurry up. I think we, we have uh, like 10 minutes before uh, security comes in and we have to leave the building. Yeah, we're going to get quick. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I'm already really happy that we uh, got the PC up and running, uh, basically. And I'm I just showing you. I have faith in you. Yeah, but you know, it, it, it takes a while. And you never know, you know, sometimes if more things went wrong, and, and for example, the PC didn't boot up or uh, the, the CPU started overheating because the cooler wasn't working correctly or I did something wrong, then, you know, you'd have to troubleshoot it. But in this case, um, yeah, it works. And uh, we're, we're just installing Windows. It's going to restart. And then, uh, you know, once we get into Windows, I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm going to call it a day then. That's, uh, that's indeed a successful build, not, not GG. I, I would say then it is GG, actually.
<laughs> GG today. well built. Exactly. <laughs> GG made it work. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's getting ready. I think this is the, the final part of the build. Uh, once it boots into Windows, it's going to, you know, nag, nag you with all those installation things like, uh, do you want to give your location? Do you want to give your advertising and targeted stuff? And do you, wanna, you want us to listen so we recognize your voice and you want us to recognize your, your handwriting? So, yeah, uh, I think once we get to that, uh, we can just basically skip to the... Uh, to the end part of the stream. I don't know, Jad, do we have any uh, any more giveaways? Do we have anything to the last to give away? Uh, yeah, we sure can. All right, then uh, I would suggest uh, to do that. All right, let's see who are the last lucky winners of today's giveaway. Again, guys, uh, it's uh, Watch Dogs Legion we're giving away today. Multiple codes. I think in, in total we've, in the end, we've given away 10 then, right? Mm, yeah. Wow. All right. Cool. Feeling really uh, <laughs> given, yes. given today. Uh, let's see. We have the first one, and his name is, oh, that's simple. LP. LP. Initials. LP. Congratulations, All right. LP. Does that stand for Linkin Park? Huh? Yeah, that can be a very good one. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, the second one is Fiant. Uh, yeah, to you, uh, congratulations as well for uh, winning the Watch Dogs League. Fiend. I think it's, it's well, Fiend. Fiend. Not, not Fiant. Fiend. Right, the, uh, the monster. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, so you two as well, uh, just uh, keep an eye out on your inbox for the coming days. Uh, we'll contact you via email and then uh, you will see how you can uh, redeem the code and get the game uh, launched in your launcher. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm, I've got the Windows installation menu now, but it, that's also going to take like uh, a couple of minutes. And, and not because the Windows installation itself takes long. Uh, it's mostly because of all the freaking questions you get. And please, please give a password. Please give a security question. One of three. Friggin' hell. Anyway, once you get to this point, uh, you should be good. Because again, you, you also saw in the BIOS, uh, if for example, you make any mistake with the cooling uh, or it doesn't work correctly, um, once you get into the BIOS, you can already see the temperature. And uh, if there, it, it just keeps rising and it, it comes up to about, I don't know, 80, 90 degrees. Yeah, you should probably uh, check to see if everything is working correctly. Uh, if your fan for your cooler is spinning, if not, uh, but also don't you don't have to worry too much because again if it gets too hot um, the pc even in the bios it has some safeguards in place so it will power down um, the only point is then at that point you, you can't really look in the bios anymore to check the temperature so you're gonna have to wait until everything cools down but it also gives you the opportunity to just check are my cables all uh, connected correctly um, uh, maybe you can also check if the uh, the, the cooler uh, so the heatsink is actually on the cpu itself correctly so yeah um, I hope this helps some people uh, and yeah as we sh as we showed um, even for us uh, mistakes they happen uh, but at least you know at the end of the stream we have a working system and um, yeah let us know if there's any other information like this uh, you want us to show at some point uh, also let us know if you have specific builds like for example I mean this is a big uh, case so it was relatively easy to fit everything in there I know at some point Michiel will probably be looking at a small form factor build where it's much more of a challenge to fit powerful components and good cooling into uh, a small case but yeah let us know if you have any suggestions or any specific questions that you'd like us to look into or to show in a in a uh, future stream uh, but for now I think that's it for us right yeah we've given away a lot of uh, codes next uh, week Definitely What's up make next sure week? To tune in next week because we are even giving away a very, very nice. Actually, the one that's sitting in front of Peter right now. But Wait, what? This one? No, the monitor. Oh, we that one. Much, we don't have that much budget. You got me yeah, excited gonna, all of a sudden. <laughs> we're going to have a special <laughs> version of that one, which is our MAG274 QRF QD, Ooh. the quantum dot version, which is one of the best ones that we have ever brought out. 
Uh, we're gonna give away. Uh, we're giving away one next week because uh, we're going to celebrate something and uh, to find out why. You gotta tune in. And of course, the main monitor we are going to talk about next week, besides that one, is going to be the 360 uh, hertz esports gaming monitor. So that one is going to be a blast. We have yeah. uh, guests joining us, uh, professionals and uh, also one from uh, NVIDIA so we're going to go into depth regarding the technology in it so uh, yeah there's gonna be tons of topics and nice stuff to go through next week and uh, how are your you uh, there. how are your reflexes Ja? very 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 fast it's analyzed we I think we can uh, measure it next week indeed so we yes. will see but yeah it's uh, it's again a very cool stream and I think it's, it's the two of us, indeed, with uh, with a special guest by NVIDIA. So, yeah, uh, but then next week gonna be, it's going to be me who's sweating, not you. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you better get uh, you better get into the spirit, man. All right. We sure Take that you. Red Bull. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for joining yeah. this week. Have a and good we'll day. See, we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye. Bye.